All right, my peoples, my bows and bow ties. This is the Black Opinionated Woman, also known as a bow. It's a little cold in here. I'm in our office that needs to be done over a little bit, so excuse the situation. I am experimenting <laughs> with a couple of different locations um, because, well, I'm trying to get my family to leave me alone. So anyway, before I start my uh, intro, I just want to say that... Um, I was thinking about a couple of instances in my professional career when I was dealing with the blackity black blacks. Um, I'm going to speak to this one in particular, maybe like 10, 15 years ago. I can't remember. Maybe It's a little, probably more like 11 years old because my, my son is 11. 11, 12 years ago, there was a young black woman who was new to a particular project that I was on. And um, foolishly, I was like really excited. <laughs> I'm thinking, yes. Someone who looks like me. This woman comes to the project and um, she comes to the project and she basically, uh, she was actually lacking in competence, but I don't know that. And she did a good job selling herself on the interview, but she did not know how to do the job. You know what? Maybe should I put this um, link in the... Um, chat or if anybody wants to join in here so she comes to um she comes to the program and she is lacking a particular skill set so i'm like hey do you need some help with something and she's like yeah 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 blah 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 so she um she she you know not, what she didn't know or maybe she felt was the the team that she was on, they were not impressed with her skill set. They didn't even like her. They just felt that she could not do the job and they were quickly um, becoming irritated. Okay. So, but I thought I was going to come in like the great caper and say, hey, let me help you out. Let's get you up to speed and people be none the wiser. So I began talking to this lady and um, I gave her some information. I even wrote up a whole bunch of stuff because there was a write-up that needed to happen. I had to show her some basic stuff on, you know, there's some technical stuff that she, she didn't know. And I remember after giving her this information, she just, <laughs> I don't even know what happened. She was like, very unappreciative. I think she was embarrassed that she had to ask for help. And then she took my information and passed it off as hers. She took my information and passed it off as hers. There was no thank you. There was nothing. Now, I'm going to play my intro and hopefully um, some of my people will have enough time to get in. If not, I'll just continue. Okay, yeah, so I'm still waiting for some people to pop in here. But yeah, so anyway, with this woman, she was very unapologetic um, about using my work and everything. Now, the the, the, the the lining, the silver lining was apparently, um, I see you, CBR kid. Give me a second. I want to finish telling this story. Um, the silver lining of this, of this story was um, this woman who I helped out, I tried to save her from being um, fired. And um, her team hated her. The, the, the thing about that with me helping her, bringing her up to speed, giving her some, some information to help her write up what she needed, even though she took my information, was apparently people figured it out quickly. Like, there's no way possible she could have done this. Because you don't come from being like a walking ding dong to suddenly knowing everything. Uh, I see you see VR kid adding you to the screen here. Hey there. So yeah, what I did was I just gave a quick rundown of a scenario I ran into when I was working about um, 10, 11 years ago, how um, someone who looked like me, she was new to the program, came. Um, she 
was not skilled for the position. And that happens. Oftentimes you'll get hired for a position and maybe you don't have all the, the tools or the skill set, but she was grossly like underqualified. And I took the time to bring her up to speed because oftentimes we don't get many people who look like us. And for those of you who don't know, I'm sure you figured out by now that I know CPR Kid. Um, the people that I bring on, I like to bring on people who are professional people that I know because I do think that representation is important. So um, at least the ones I know right now, hopefully one day I grow and then <laughs> I won't know who it is. But so the people that I know most of the times who are chiming in or whatever, I know who they are. <laughs> I draw, you know, there, there was someone in, in um, career field. You know, I'm an engineer, CBR kids, engineer, um, IT person, et cetera. So anyway, I was explaining how this person that I knew came on, didn't know what she was doing. I helped her out. And then once I got her up to a functional level, she wasn't even like, high performer, but she was at the point where she could manage mm -hmm. and grow. She was, it was like, she was angry and, and I didn't understand. I didn't understand it. Right. And not only that, but she took my work and passed it off as her own. hundred mm. percent. Like wow. I'd written up something more so as a guide to help her with writing something because like, I didn't want to see her fail. Gotcha. And I'll never forget how, nasty she was. Like, I couldn't even understand. I'm sitting there thinking, like, I thought I did something good. They say no good deed goes unpunished. Now, I have all kinds of stories like these. So anyway, what I wanted to do, let me go to my little uh, situation over here. I wanted to talk about how right here, um, I was talking with Dee Shabazz um, earlier this week about this particular topic. Now, mm -hmm. in Dee Shabazz's uh, world, you know, because he likes to go hard. He said, no, we should make the whole thing on, uh, I wrote it down. How come black people don't have codified behavior? They're all cold. This is all cold behavior. Same, same sentiment. I'm like, well, that's not right. my voice, but it's the same sentiment. My sentiment is there's no unity and there's no uh -huh. loyalty. Now, hold on a second. Let me go ahead. You always got to put my disclaimers up. I don't want any drama. <laughs> These are just opinions. <laughs> Everything is alleged, even though it's an opinion, until it's proven to be true or untrue. <laughs> there you go. Every, everything's alleged. <laughs> even though we're not even pushing facts or anything, that's all alleged. The second thing is anyone who chooses to come on here is a willing participant and understands that this is going to be posted. Okay. So. I want to talk about this loyalty thing. What do you think about that? And I'll give you my reasons why I think there's no loyalty, no unity. Yeah, I don't know the reasons why. Uh, so I've been in both situations where, well, I get, actually, let me back up. What I notice is that generally whenever I go to a new contract, new office, whatever, um, the people that look like us tend to gravitate towards each other, especially if we're in the same age range. Yeah. Um, like you and me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, exactly. We're separated by like a few months, I think. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> well, not even six months, so. <laughs> but, but, so that's that was the first thing I noticed. Um, interestingly enough, in my experience, it's, only, it's, it's weird, but I don't know why. Actually, I do know why in my situation, but it was the one guy who looked like me, who was in my age range, who smiled in my face and you know, he had discussions. Now he was a program manager and I was just a server guy. But um just a server guy. Know, or yeah. But I mean, I was under his purview, so to speak. And um he was the guy who actually stabbed me in the back. And on the flip side of that, you know, um, in jobs at, at you know, subsequent to that, it was the older white guy that looked out. So it was it was the weirdest thing. And um, I just I, I just chalked it up and was like, whatever, man. But um, I don't know. I don't understand that. That I don't understand that at all. You know, I'm, I'm kind of like Disha Baz in the sense that hey, we should all be rooting for each other and pushing for each other's success. Now, you you prove yourself to be a to be a dumb dumb, or you prove yourself to be you know somebody who just can't be helped. And so be it. You're on your own. But until that happens, you would think we all want to help each other as much as we possibly can. So I don't know. Yeah, it's interesting because I have several stories. And as you know, um, 
in our career field, um, I do a lot of systems. I do engineering work, but I'll do a lot of architecture work too. Mm-hmm. Doing architectural work. Um, well, you got the double it. whammy because it's just it's not many women yeah. around. Period. Yeah. So you got the double whammy. Yeah, and I think what happens is oftentimes. You know, I, I, I don't want to be like the victim. I don't want to pull the card, but no, I mean, it is what it is. Most of the time, it's actually in IT in general, you walk in the room, you look around, there's just not a whole lot of women there. And then with Black women in actual engineering positions, and so mm-hmm. let me, for those of you who don't know, let me, let me, um, I need to talk with a level of specificity for a second. In IT, there's various roles. But when you talk about engineering, there's mm-hmm. very few black people who are doing engineering, mm-hmm. especially women, mm-hmm. especially black women. Mm-hmm. So I am one of those people. I am definitely, I won't say I'm foraging new waters because um, it's not new. It's just not a highly walked path. Right. Okay? It there's so, there's a whole other conversation needs to be had about um, black women engineers and just mm-hmm. engineering and that's a separate conversation. But I'm going to talk about black people in general. We can talk about the culture. When we see each other in these spaces, mm-hmm. there's those of us who know, like we see each other, like. Mm-hmm. At, at some point, there's a kinship, right? Like, and then there's those who are almost resentful. Mm-hmm. We get to that in a second. So I wrote down some notes. Um, I wasn't sure if these Shabazz was going to be able to get on, and I think he's, you know, he was all over the place. I was like, "What's going on?" You know, he had things going on. Hopefully, he'll jump on here. I, I shot him a text message, but um, I would say, with within our community. He likes to say there's no kind of high behavior. It's all cool behavior. And, and I agree. I say mm-hmm. we don't have the unity, the loyalty. I mean, it's all related. And I think much of it is because we don't have a sense of community. We don't gatekeep. And mm-hmm. as these Shabazz, we, we have these conversations all the time. He says there's no consequence for these behaviors. Okay. So it makes me think of your Candace Owens and your Terry Crews and your, your Kevin Hart's. Okay. Your Tyler Perry's. Right. Um, okay. There is no consequence for showing a lack of unity, a lack of respect, a lack of loyalty. You know, there there is none of that. There there's no there's no sh- shame. Really, it's like I'm mm-hmm. doing me. Um, as a group, we are not a unit. We're more individualistic. Yeah, it's interesting because like there's it's one it's one thing like with us, right? Just people you know, engineers are you know, people in right in normal careers. And then the whole the celebrity side of it is even a whole nother thing. I don't I really don't get why they go at each other. I can't figure that one out to save my life. So weird because their work opportunities are far less than those who don't look like them. right, right. The um but I can't just own it's just he's she's a whole different <laughs> she's a whole different animal. I don't even consider her a celebrity. She's just somebody who talks. And she says some things that are controversial that have gotten, you know, I don't know her background, so I'm not gonna say that. But my, you know, my thing with her is I just I hear her say things. I'm like, did you really say that? And of course she gets a ton of like people who, who engage in that kind of crazy, like I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm a whole lot of cycles. Now, it's not that I'm trying to just listen to people who sound exactly like me because mm. um, I do believe in dissent, dissension. That's how you sure. sharpen each other, right? Sure. But when you go off the deep end <laughs> and you're, you, you're in wackadoodle land, right? I'm just like, there's no need to even donate cycles to it, right? Because there's no, there's no changing. Right, right, right. On the extremes, there's no need to. Ex- no. What, and what a lot of the celebrity stuff I would love and oh you know you've heard me say this before I prefer to try to and you don't can't really see it but I would prefer to try to who are you off camera are you doing this for clicks are you doing this to keep your name out there are you doing you know or are you doing this because this is what you really think 
and, and this is how you really think. And I don't know, you know, um, <laughs> I don't know. Like I said, I don't know why they go back and forth at each other because I'm like, all of you guys are successful. There's enough out there for everybody. Why are you, you know, why are you, you know, beating each other down? It doesn't, that doesn't make any sense at all. I'm like, you've all made it to quote unquote made it, right? So I, I, that part I really truly don't get, but like I'm not a celebrity, so I guess it's not for me to understand. So with us, I, but uh, and and I guess you could say the same thing applies in our field or in any other field. Um, where it's like, why are you tearing down the person you should be lifting up? Who's more than likely the person who may reach back to you? Yeah, and part of the reason why. Uh, you and I were talking about this type of thing because you were aware of something that happened actually, uh, it was this week. So, mm -hmm. uh, for those who are going to probably catch this later, um, I'm working on something that is becoming quite visible. Um, it's important. I can't really get into what it is, yeah, but sure. um, the, 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 Let's just call the, it a project. <laughs> project, you know. So I am in the role of the architect, and so that requires me to have um, systems engineers who's going to perform a set of um, activities. Mm -hmm. And one of those engineers happens to be someone who looks like us. Now, mm -hmm. let me just say because I'm in full like shady mode, like he's a little bit of a dum dum. You know, I mean, like. That's, that's all I'm gonna say. I think so. The 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 the, the person of interest um, was having a difficult time completing certain tasks, and so what I needed was I pulled him aside and I said, "Hey, look, this isn't what they're looking for." There were several times where I had to explain, um, "This is the information. This is the source. This is what I'm looking for," and mm -hmm. you have to mindful of what you're sending out because it's not just me who's looking at it. There are other people who are looking at it and we're going to judge. And so over a period of time, he became defensive because mm -hmm. he kept underperforming. Mm -hmm. And in the process, I was like, well, if you're not going to listen, I'm not going to keep telling you. I, so what happened was I checked out. I'm like, I can't do this seven, eight times in a row. Right. You refuse to change. You refuse right. to do things. So the person who looks like you and me, and you've overheard some of the silliness, so you you know I'm not making it up, but mm -hmm. um, the person, I think, became embarrassed, actually. And so if you continuously do the same bad things, and what's going to happen is, I'm just going to say, hey, look, if you're not going to listen, I, I can't Go ahead. You. Yeah, well, I'm not going to keep saving you. Right. And so what happened was I stopped engaging because the person was getting in their feelings. It was getting to the point where now it was like getting personal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're doing it to yourself. The person was disgruntled, I guess, last week because um, the person came over to my desk, was loud and wrong, like just loud and wrong. And after became, becoming aggressive, which I'm like, first of all, we should not be doing this with each other. But mm -hmm. the person a little on the aggressive side and so I asked the person to leave my desk. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not one of those people who's out to like get my people. You have to do something right, right. The screen. But the person I asked to leave my desk, <laughs> I'm like, you're doing too much. Mm -hmm. Now what the, the the walking ding dong didn't comprehend was the rest of my teammate could hear what was teammates could hear what's going on to include my mm -hmm. lead or something. And they're like, really? Like, why does he keep coming over here? Like, it, so they've seen some of this behavior before, mm -hmm. and he was he was less than smart, so he tried to actually report me. <laughs> it's so laughable. He actually tried to report me, and so at first they were like, "Well, what is going on?" I'm like, "I don't know what's going on because I don't mm -hmm. tell anything back." So after some, so, um, so basically, we wound up coming out that. Um, the guy, the guy who's leading our team, I lead a certain part, but he's overall lead. He was like, no. And the, this this guy is a white guy. And mm -hmm. he was the one that was like, no, pushing back. Like, uh, no, because he keeps coming to her desk. He's mm -hmm. the one that's being aggressive. He's giving out bad information. She has asked him multiple times not to come, not mm -hmm. with shenanigans. 
I have right. a point with these guys. And so he mentioned, he's like, no, like flat out no. Like, this, mm-hmm. like actually it's almost a form of bullying basically. Now I can handle myself, but I'm not going to do that at work. You know, I'm going to let you yeah. sing yourself. So right. anyway, the dingbat himself, I guess he thought he was doing something. Now, I was pissed off a few days ago just because of the fact that he would do something like that. It was like a, I'm going to call it a Mitch move. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, but wait a second. You're really mad at yourself. Not at me. It's not my mm-hmm. fault that you're dumb. <laughs> but I didn't say that. That's how I was feeling on the inside. Right. If I want you guys to just to stick with me for a second here. I think the main thing was because of his ego, Mm -hmm. He wanted to punish me. Actually, I didn't even do anything. Mm -hmm. He wanted, I'm like, did you really do that? Let's let's say true. He tried to say that I I talked down to him or something like that. Like she talked down. I'm like, oh my gosh. See, that that could have just been a private conversation. Like, hey, let me talk to you for a minute. Let's say that was the case. Even though I had my back to him and I was just like, please leave. Let's say that was true. Mm-hmm. Why would you try to do something like that? That was nasty. It was vicious. I'm mm-hmm. like, what man does that? So now you know I got nothing for him. And fortunately, there were people who were like, uh, no. So right. that's right. going to be like all oh, under the, it's, it's, it's going to basically be being a non starter. Mm-hmm. But I think he was really upset because there's something that happened previously where they were, they're not really happy with him anyway. But I think the biggest thing is, there's so few of us in these positions mm-hmm. and you would think you would try to help each other. Now I'm right. in a position where I tried to help him multiple times. I'm like, Hey, you don't want to do that. Like right. they don't, they're not valuing that. Right. Your name is not sounding good. You may want to consider this, but instead of taking, you know, now there was a way that I had to bring it, but I brought it seven or eight times offline. Mm-hmm. And everything, and for this person to take that out on me, I was so disappointed. And I mean, it wasn't even true, it was mm-hmm. flat, not even true, but it was the principle mm-hmm. it was the principle that got me. Yeah, and I was sitting there thinking, like, if I was really vicious, I could bury you. Mm-hmm. Look, I don't play those games, I don't do those shenanigans, and right, the white woman, like, oh, this feels so uncomfortable. In the world. I don't, I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, but I don't do but, that. You would have to really do something crazy for me to do that. I just don't believe in messing with people's livelihoods just because you're an a hole. Like, right, I don't right. talk to you because I just right. I step out. But yeah. I think the thing is with black people, there's no consequence to this behavior. So now that the scuttlebutt's getting around, they did that to people. Are like, I'm like, wait a minute, and now now everybody's looking at them sideways. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like, did you really come and do that? And I just feel like one thing Disha Baz says, even though we disagree on certain things, he's like, we need mm-hmm. public shame. I'm like, oh, I don't know about public shame. I mean, these are still people, but he's like, there's no consequences for when people behave, when they misbehave in the community. Yeah, it's to me, it's one of those things where I'm like, okay, you know what? I feel like you eventually you're going to get yours one way or the other. You know, I don't have to be the person to deliver the justice, you, you know. You're gonna get yours one way or the other. It's it'll come out, it'll get exposed, or you'll get exposed one way or the other at some point in time. So I think um there probably, you know, there are consequences. We just may not see them when they happen, or we may not be around for them to happen. Yeah. But, you know, oftentimes, you know, you'll hear about, oh wow, that and that, that happened after two years after I left, or you know, a year after I got promoted or and moved on, or you know, whatever the case may be. So I think the consequences are there, just not in the way that we would like to see them happen. You know what I mean? Yes, for sure. But I think, why are we stabbing and crabbing? Isn't that what my uh, thumbnail says? (laughs) Stabbing and crabbing. (laughs) Why are you stabbing somebody in the back? Or when I see people try to pull you down because they don't want you to be elevated. It's just like unbelievable. Yeah, I never, I can't figure that out to save my life. And like I said, you know, my career has been my white managers that have been the ones that are putting that say, hey, let me let me clue you into something. Let me let me explain to you how this thing works, the part you don't know. And 
they and they're they're the same ones that you know I, was, I can think of one in particular when uh I was working working on a project and doing really well. I got promoted, but the raise didn't match the promotion, and I wasn't happy with that. So I let him know, and he he basically told me, "Listen, you didn't hear this from me, but this is how much they charge for you to be here." You write down the number you want, and I'll see if I can get it for you. And I gave him a number, and he got it for me. And I saw that same manager years later. He had, he had moved way up in the company. I was off to another company, but working part-time. And the first thing he did, came down, hey, how you doing? If you ever need anything, let me know. If you want to come over here and work full-time, let me know. That I'll bring you on the whole nine. And I was like, dang, you know, that's, that, that was... But yeah, and it's funny you should say that. I want to speak to that um, before we, we, we talk about that. I, I just got a text message. Z Shabazz is going to be coming on shortly. Um, I'm okay. like, on your topic. That's what you wanted to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, dude, you know, he's, he is one of my favorite people. But you know, he's, mm -hmm. he's going to go in. Yeah, he's going to go in. <laughs> well, no, his audio is going to be janky at first. I'm like, yo, don't we have it? Yeah. Even at work, I'm like, what is up with you and audio? <laughs> <laughs> when I hit him up on my So um yes, we all work in a technical environment. So um excuse me. So I want to talk about the money thing for a second. Mm -hmm. Um I find that the people who are a little bit more insecure, we do talk money, we talk salaries. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We talk about bonuses, we talk about I actually told one of my coworkers today, he said something. And I said, wait a minute, that's your lead? I'm like, you need to go back. <laughs> like, I'm like so ridiculous with mine. I'm like, I want this amount. Mm -hmm. I need a signing bonus. This is my salary. Like, this is this yeah. is what it is. Like, I just can't. I can't. Like, you, I'm like, oh, righteous indignation. The first thing is, if you don't ask, you know, you can't complain when you don't get what you want. So, first thing is, put it out there. You never know, and they might come back too too easily. Say, okay, and you're like, wait a minute, did I ask for enough? So, <laughs> yeah. But, um, let me tell you, I, I've, I've had to do that. I mean, let me, I'm going to get on to the uh, white managers and, 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 and leads and stuff like that. Now, I've had some good black ones, and I've had some mm -hmm. shady black ones that, yeah. Yeah. And it goes on both sides, black mm -hmm. and white. Yep. But the interesting yep. thing about <laughs> the white ones, when they rock with you, mm -hmm. they rock harder oh, than yep. black ones. Yep. I've had white managers, well, and black too, but I've had white managers mm -hmm. that, like, literally, they were like, we're going mm -hmm. to take this up a couple of levels because you should be doing this. Mm -hmm. and, like, we're going to elevate even how you're speaking in these environments. I have one black, I did it too. But the interesting, like, actually, where I am right now, when I first got there, I was like, ah, oh, I don't know. But mm -hmm. the, the guy, the lead in this particular position, I think over time, I think he's like, I trust her mm -hmm. with X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. And he's showing me certain things. Right. It, 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 it was just the natural progression, mm -hmm. you know, like taking me offline, like, okay, this is what you need, blah, blah, blah. Yep. And I yep. was like, holy cow. It, hap it just happens. It but just anyway, I, I just wanted to say that it's really unfortunate that. Black people, I'm not, we're speaking primarily in IT, guys. So we're, we're a little bit myopic right now. Um, what, is, what is this? Sorry, I'm getting blown up. You're getting all types of alerts, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, uh, something about what's going on in Virginia. And <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what's going on. Oh, yes. okay. So um, I, I'll, I'll tell you offline because it's related to something that we would know. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to say, and I'm going to move on. These Shabazz is going to talk about this topic. I think that our, our people, we're not used to being loyal to each other. It's kind of like with siblings. My, I tell my children, I don't care if your sibling is as wrong as two left feet. If somebody is trying to whoop someone's time parts, all of you jump in. I'll deal with the consequences later. They could be wrong as two left shoes. Yep. Yep. Uh, but you... You roll with your sibling and you deal with it after the fact. Yeah. Right. So I'm going to move on to the next one because these Shabazz is just going to be short. We can circle back to this. Okay. Uh, this is what I think part of what's going on with the stabbing and the crabbing. 
I think it's the fear of the limited activity. So what, what did I write down for this? I think with Black people, there's this fear mm-hmm. um, of the limited opportunity. So like, mm-hmm. if I don't get this opportunity, I can't elevate. I can't take care of my kids. <sighs> It's like like a survival mechanism, like the Hunger Games. So it's interesting because I'm like, is 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 it fear of perceived limited opportunity? Because specifically in our field, there's no limits on opportunity. It's there for you if you want it. You know, if you go out and get it. Now I know in other fields, it's a little bit different. You know, in education, it can only be one principal of the school. You know, and it's only so many of those positions to go around. So I get that. In, in certain realms, and generally the further up you move, the less of those positions there are. But for the for most people, I would say that I, you know I would say that's a per, um, incorrect perception rather than a reality. Well, like I said, I, I see you, um, Disha Bass. I brought you into the stream. Um, we're going to circle back to your favorite one in a second, but I want to finish up on the spirit. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably going to be in his best behavior, but offline, <laughs> Disha oh. Bass is a threat. <laughs> my, <laughs> my God. <laughs> They are limited opportunity. I honestly believe that Black people, this whole class right. of barrel. <laughs> yeah. You there? Is your audio good? <laughs> You hear me? Not quite. <laughs> <laughs> he killed me. So I just really believe black, black. I I can I can hear you. What what did I, you I have was, to repeat it again? Because it was coming I in was a little choppy. So. I said, did you get your audio together? <laughs> you didn't hear me. You need to catch the shade. <laughs> All right. Um anyway, I, I need to say this and then I'll, oh, I'll circle back. I don't know. Some reason. I don't I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the this platform, this platform or something. I'm not sure. But uh but All it's right. just a little Clearly. choppy. I'm like I am speaking I guess I'm speaking fine on your end, but you're coming yeah. in choppy. That's what I mean by that. We hear you fine. Say it again. I hear you fine. Oh, okay. Yeah, you guys are coming in. You guys are coming in choppy on my end. So when I'm hearing you, you got to boost your Wi-Fi. <laughs> I don't know why that is, but anyway, all right. So <laughs> let's let's. Uh, I, I hate to go back or whatever was the last thing that was talked to us. So I can <laughs> come to speed, come up to speed. Right, well, let, me, let me wrap up number two, and I'm gonna take you back to number one. What I said was, yeah. Well, I, I mean, even I mean, even number two, we can go from the where we were talking about number two as well. So what I was saying was a lot of us do this stabbing and crabbing because I think there's this fear of limited opportunity, meaning like this person can't possibly get to the top because then there's nothing left for me. And there's nothing left for me. I can't survive. I can't take care of my family. I can't take care of myself. I said, it's, it's like basically trying to survive. It's like being tribute in the Hunger Games. <laughs> and so we can't, like, if, if one person makes it out, then it's like... No. Nope. Well, I, I think in that, that analogy, when you use a crab in a barrel analogy, I, I, I always tend to see, are we talking about black folks working for uh, non-black companies? Are we talking about black people or, uh, just, or, or are we just talking about the companies in the, uh, all together that everyone's competitive? I have position? experienced that with black people in non-black companies and black people in black black settings, black organizations. I've experienced it, period. It didn't even matter the complexion of the person. But we're just talking about just the workplace in general. I'm yeah. saying correct. The, it could be the workplace. It could, it could not be the workplace. I'm experiencing Okay, well, black people. I think when you talk about, are we just, are we just talking about black people, though, right now? Because I, I want to make sure I'm on the, on the right topic. People just black people, why we are stabbing and crabbing each other. Okay, yeah, with that with that analogy, the crab and a barrel analogy, we gotta also remember a barrel a, uh, or a barrel or a bucket is not the natural environment of a crab. So I guess. those crabs in that barrel they're they're, okay, they're, they're not crab. acting. Say it again. Beg okay, your take out stabbing. We'll use stabbing. Why is this weird? We'll just do this the stab. Okay. Take uh 
You mean as far what but it goes back to the same instance. Are we talking about black folks in a, in a competitive environment caused by someone who's controlling how people view each other? And that also talks about the leadership within that organization that that it's used to pit one against the other. But well, it, it may also speak to leadership as well as the individual who are on the, on the team. You missed the earlier part when I talked about two different scenarios, two scenarios okay. where um, they there were no black people pitted against each other. They were they weren't pitted. Okay. But one okay. was based on ego, and you know I, I was I was speaking about the one of the um, COVID under this week. Who he, I mean, so look, this is just my personal opinion. Hold on, let me just let, this right. and let me throw this out. So, uh, uh, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Because I also think about part, one other thing. I think part of it was his insecurity because he was lacking some crucial, like you know, like chromosome or some DNA uh, material, and it he just didn't understand the fact that he was a dumbbell. Now, what I really am saying was when I try to help someone more than once, and they're angry because they wanted to be right about something. And I was trying to explain, I'm like, well, actually you gave some bad information and it was 100% bad multiple times. And he refused to believe it was, it was just bad data. Like it was just flat out wrong. And then actually he even kept admitting he was making the same mistake. And I was like, you, you can't do this. This is, I'm like, you're giving it to me. This wasn't even like, and when this person was angry because I stopped engaging after seven or eight times, I'm like, because now you're impacting me. I just literally stopped engaging. What happened was it became very personal. And this person wanted to report me for talking down to him or something. I'm like, I don't talk to you, period, as in zero words. But you came over and he, he stood at my desk and he was very aggressive. And, and I hate using words like he was very aggressive, but he was actually very aggressive. When you're leaning in, I'm sitting down with my back and you're gesturing and all this other extra. And I'm like, please leave my desk. And for him to be upset because he is a walking ding dong and I refuse to engage the ding dongery, you're loud and wrong, loud and wrong. And for him to try, he actually tried to report me. And I was talking down to him. And I'm like, I don't talk to you like ever anymore. It was so bad that he keeps wanting to talk to me. He tells me when he's going to the bathroom. I'm like, I don't, I don't care. So the point I'm making is this person tried to report me for not engaging. Okay. Um, okay? So this wasn't that some white person pitted him against me. He literally was just angry because I would not engage and accept his bad data. It was really bad. It was like 100% wrong. It's like asking for the instructions on how to make hot dogs and somebody sends you a box of tutus. You're like, <laughs> right. So, so, okay. So, what it sounds like to me, I mean, look, and this is another in this scenario about this particular person. Well, do you want these black baby boomers? Uh, he's older than me, yeah. but probably fit closer to fifteen years. Yeah, so I guess I would say he's like a, a yeah, so he's like a black baby, baby boomer. Huh? So he'd be on the tail end of the baby. Yeah, boomers, it's not, it's, yeah. It, yeah, he's a black baby boomer. So that's oh, typical of the black baby boomers. <laughs> and uh, like I told you before, how they dropped the ball. And they are they were the ones who really were, were the first wave to kind of some of them were tokenized, so they were not really some some not all but some particularly let's say if you came into the late seventies early eighties into the workforce some of those black folks were not your best and brightest that came out of the segregated school systems so a lot of those tokens who were the first integrated those schools generally aren't your best and the brightest and they were just tokens and they would happen to be there because they're black and although i don't know this person i'm using this scenario a little bit this is what it sounds like he's one of these guys who just kind of got along to get along and got in because he was one of those he's black let's just bring him in here so we can meet our little 
thing back, whatever that we got about first. So with that being said, with that guy, what it sounds like, he used to just kind of being in the background. I guess now he's older. He's realizing younger people are coming behind him who are more qualified and have more skills. So he's trying to show that, hey, wait a minute. I, I, this can't pass me up. So I'm, I'm saying all this to say this. A lot of those black baby boomers lack are lacking. So that's what you're running into. And possibly another scenario. I don't know this guy. What's his background, his family background? Was well, he one of these black immigrants? We can't forget those no, uh, he's from dynamics DC. as well. No, he's from DC and he's got he what? I think he's from DC. Oh, he's got well, I told well well I well I told you about that aspect too. I mean, he's got a core <laughs> well, issue. I mean He's constantly coming up to me well, like, like. Well, I told you, know, I, I told you my not, scenario. What I've noticed, most of the people that we've, for lack, I hate to even put it out there like this, but since we're in a black forum in a black setting, we have to be honest. A lot of native Washingtonians and folks in this area come from a different slant and see things from a different way. And the culture here is a little different. I don't know if, if you've experienced. I, uh, no. Um, we are. Well, now, where are you? Are you from DC? No, me. No. Uh, me? No, I'm, I'm from Baltimore. Uh, see, you gotta put names up again. <laughs> They're up there. They're yeah. up there. Oh, I'm, okay, so. All of your um. So, your, all your names. So you, that let you me. Have. Huh? You guys type right your name. You can put your real name in there. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm. I'm trying to see C O oh, the C R. CBR. I don't see the net name posted. Just so you just go CBR. Kid, that's all. Yeah. Kid. Okay. It makes it even better. Kid. All right. Well, kid, you're from Baltimore. And you um being I've been here for a while, so I know there's this Baltimore different cultures. Baltimore, of Baltimore, there's always a Baltimore DC rivalry, yeah. DC. <laughs> but I, I wasn't aware of that until I got to college. But yeah. And um <laughs> To me, well, from the outside of looking in, and of me being a while, I always use the analogy with the Baltimore DC, and I'll, I'll put that to the side. But um, mm -hmm. you being here, you notice folks from DC have a different interaction and culture and how they value things and prioritize. Mm -hmm. I think that's so, another dynamic within. Yeah, in my so opinion. I always. <laughs> well, my take, I got a different a different take on that. Nobody's, my opinion, like very few people actually from DC. They're from that area and claim DC. But what I notice is the people who are from D.C. that I know we're talking about black people that are in, I say, my age range or whatever. They're generally from southeast and they they grew up, you know, with that whole struggle. They're different from the folks who grew out, grew up out in, you know, in the different parts of P.G. County. Where I'm like, well, wait a minute. You grew up in a half a million dollar house in the 80s and 90s. Why? You know, you grew up with all the advantages and privileges. But not now you want to become this other thing. So I, I, I see a contrast with that, just that in general. But, um, you know, other than no, that. No, I, I can see that, that that's deep and going a little deeper into it. But I'm just saying, in mm -hmm. general, there's a certain mindset within this whole DMV, particularly the D.C. area, on how they value and see things. And okay. So that could also be that dynamic that you experienced, uh, mm -hmm. Ms. Bo. <laughs> this is what I will say. I find that many of the black people in in our IT community, um, and I, it, obviously there's exceptions to everyone, but I just see that some. Well, let me rephrase that. There are some in in of us in this community who, number one, there is no unity or loyalty, and number two, there is this fear. This is crabs in the barrel mentality, regardless of why it is, but I'm saying it is, it exists. And whether you help people, it doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't matter. It, there's just like, I just find that I, wherever I, we go, there's some who don't want to work with black people because they don't want to be seen as being next to black people. When oftentimes the black people are some of the sharpest people in the room because they have to be. I know I'm always well. Right. Well, I yeah. think again, uh, in my opinion and in my experience of what I've seen, and, what, and I think there's layers to it. I think there's layers to it. Uh, in my opinion, what you're saying, the ones who don't want to be around black folks and have this kind of 
it's kind of a low key cooning vibe that they want to be or not be. Oh, we don't want too many of us around us, and this uh, this other thing, and they want to try to be this token and stand out. So what I, I find I for myself, <laughs> huh? say it again. That act, that's actually one of my. Um, I had four points, and that actually is number four. Oh, okay, and what I find that there's different there's different layers of the um, black folks in the work pool, and you have to. What, what I generally do, and what I've learned, I can't say generally do. What I've learned over the years is. You kind of first when you come into that work environment, kind of just observe, watch, listen, mm -hmm. and then observe. Particularly, this is what I do. Particularly, I I I just watch. Don't say much, but watch particularly how some black folks interact with white food, folks from the dominant society, and that kind of exposes who I'm dealing with, and know how to go from there. Got yeah. okay. Fair enough. Well, see, you can be tough because when we first met, you were like, you walked right by me. I was like, I did? <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> Remember that conversation? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I said, I observe. That's my thing. I observe and watch first. I didn't even know you. I was like, wait, what? Like, are you sure it was me? Because I was just like, <laughs> I, oh. I observe, I watch, and I, I particularly watch. <laughs> How black you folks interact like with folks from the dominant. I, I watch and I observe how black folks interact with the dominant society. There's one person uh, that I listen to all all the time, and one of his best quotes and what he always says: "If you want to, if you want to know how a black person really thinks, or or do you want a black person to expose himself on what they uh, what they think and how they feel, have them say what they're saying to a black to a white person, and the have truth will come what? out." Have, say, have, them say, have them say, have them say whatever they want that that they feel their true feelings will come out when they talk to a white person. Oh, well, it was interesting because you and I got to know each other. I spoke to him time, but when I first met him, I didn't even see him. It was where the cubicles were. He was like, "Hey, you were walking right by me." I'm like, "You sure it was me?" <laughs> didn't even That's see funny. him. And then once I, got, I was, I talked to him fine. Like I didn't have any issues, you know. But it was so funny because you can be tough. Like you'll make assumptions, and I'm like, "Are you sure you saw me?" Because I didn't even see you. Mm -hmm. it's not, well, like I said, I just yeah. observe first, and then I'll watch and observe and see what that and go from there. See, like for example, when I first saw CBR kid, I mean, it took me a minute because I didn't even. I thought he was just passing through an office. I didn't know he had moved into our office. <laughs> I was like, are you still here? <laughs> That's funny. But I didn't know. I mean, it was one of those things. It wasn't like he was formally introduced. So he was on a, another team. And I was like, how long has he been here? Like, I saw him standing around talking about, I'm like, does he, does he work here? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Right. That's funny. But yeah. as, long as, he, uh, hey, as long as he didn't think he was in the mail room. That's cool. <laughs> but I was like, well, who was this guy? And I was like, well, what is his name? Like, I was the worst, but I, I'm always the worst. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> funny. Did. You know, but it wasn't like, you know, I was speaking to him differently in front of anybody else. I just didn't know. He, I'm like, do you, do you work here? <laughs> you know, it wasn't like they said, hey, this is so and so. <laughs> But anyway, let me let me go. Let me say I'm gonna I'm gonna stick on this pick me for a second. I feel like there's so many who want to be seen as the only knowledgeable black person, and it's like they want to be validated as like the chosen one, and they want to be accepted. And it's not like that's, there's a ton of us anyway. That's low. That's low key cooning. It was, uh, it's interesting because I you know. Uh, yeah, pretty much everybody's like that. Everybody wants to be the star at some point or no, another. No, but if you're trying to be validated by folks from the from the dominant society, you're going out of your way. That's okay. Cooning. Okay. Okay. I got you. I got you. I'm just thinking about it in general. No, if you just if you are a professional and you on your stuff and you know you're on your stuff, but if you're going out of your way because you, uh, oh, I I need Mr. Charlie to make sure he sees. Hey, make sure Mr. Charlie know this is me who did this. <laughs> You're going out of your way to do kind of stuff. That's that's low key cooney. I got you. You know what? I will say there's something to that because you know I don't like to say that, but there's something to that. I'll say the reason why. This same dum dum, I had an offsite. It was his team and my team, 
And he knew the people to get there, but I had all the questions, the real questions. I knew he couldn't deliver the way I wanted to. So when we arrived at this offsite several months ago and I get there and, you know, everyone's these big buff dudes, you know, former military, like everybody's just, you know, and I get in there and I start asking questions. And so the guy that I'm asking questions to, I know he's a little taken aback, but I had a, a job to perform. And ding dong, every time I would say something, well, what she means is, okay, what she's saying is, and he kept blowing me off and trying to say, oh, this is really what it means. And I had to look at him in front of people. I'm like, I think I can answer, I can ask these questions. Now, what I was doing, not to, to nerd out here, what I was doing was validating our lexicon for systems engineering stuff so I can do my architecture. What I wanted to do was make, make sure that the definitions we have was called an AB2. And the AB2 was fully vetted, actually, because the the definitions that we have weren't necessarily marrying up to what they thought things were. So we wanted to make sure that when we had the conversation that we're using the right nomenclature, the right language, and actually to make sure that we're talking about the same thing. So I was asking some of these like questions at first, and he's trying to talk over me. And I had to pull him off to the side, especially when we left that site. I said, let me make this clear. Don't you ever do that again. I said, because if you do it again, I promise you, I am so slick with the tongue. I will embarrass you in front of the same people that you're trying to look good in front of. I will embarrass you. Because what you're doing is you're trying to big dog me. And, I, and it's not going to work that way. And I started to say, like, seriously, I have forgotten more than you already know. Because he clearly is not the brightest. But it was just what he was doing. And I'm looking at him like, don't you ever do that again. Ever. Well, see, in his in his mind, and probably, and I, I don't know this guy, but I'm going on a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Uh, you told me he was one of these late baby boomers and Negro baby boomers. <laughs> and um, the fact that he kind of felt that, I guess, he was trying to be like a Negro whisperer. <laughs> meaning, <laughs> meaning that he can interpret and tell these good old, these good white folks on what you really meant. Because, you know, he comes from that generation and thinking that he's older. That, and this is just all on assumption because I don't know. This is the same way we talked about uh, uh, Uncle Remus, right? This is Uncle Remus? I, I call him Sambo. You call him Uncle Remus. We had yeah, another yeah, so funny with that. Well, he was like acting like a real life runaway well, slave. Like, well, well, it's, 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 the, the analogy of Uncle Remus, I think, is a better fit. Do you, do you, you know who Uncle Remus was or the character I, was? I don't. I'm going to have to look him up, but I, it's just funny to okay. me when you say it. Uh, I'll look, he him, was I'll the look him up and get the background. Okay, well, I, just to make a strong, just to make a short synopsis. Yeah, uncle Remus was the, the jolly black uncle from the from the Disney movie Song of the South from Imperables, and he was the one who would um, talk with the, the young white people and help um, polish and make white people feel comfortable and all that kind of okay. stuff. Oh, okay. So I got you. Okay, I got it. I got the role. So whereas Uncle Ru Uncle Ruckus was nasty towards black folk, Uncle Remus was to try to get along and smooth everything over and all that other stuff, you. but at the extent of you know being a coon. I got you. This is the thing. Like the guy, he was actually really nice, but he was saying some things that were problematic, which was like offensive to me. Mm -hmm. And so um oh, but anyway, Remus. <laughs> but the point I was making was when this other <laughs> It was like he, the main one, he just kept wanting to be like this standout to show like he was the man. He was constantly peacocking. And we're all looking at him like. That's the Negro whisperer. That's what he was trying to be, a Negro whisperer, too. But I was like the only Negro other than himself. Right. And white. that's why he kept saying, and that's why he kept saying what she meant to say or what she's trying to say, mm -hmm. because he's being the Negro whisperer. He's interpreting for this, because the good white folks don't understand black folks in his mind. It was just That's so embarrassing, and I'm looking at him like, you know, I wanted to cut. But, like, but to be honest with you, I think that's kind of common or with his generation. Yeah, see, and I like I've had a different experience with people of that generation, but you know, I think about one of my early. I call him one of my early mentors. He's the early, the front side of the baby boomers. He's like, the guy we're talking about is more late. The guy I'm talking about will probably be about 15 years older than this guy. Well, see, those, and, he pull me, 
Well, wait, let me just say, me. Let, okay, me, go ahead, go let me ahead. ask you. Let me just ask you this before you go there, because there is a distinction. If you're saying he was a, ba maybe he might not have been a baby, depending what year he was born. Like prime example, my my parents were born in the late thirties. Okay, so they were like the last generation that were in those black uh, segregated schools, and back then, you had uh, those the segregated schools in the South back then before integration. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the teachers that taught in the black schools because of uh, limited opportunity, a lot of those teachers were on par of pro college professors in a lot of those high schools. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the black students that came out of those high schools back in the day, in the 40s and the 50s, were brilliant black folks. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so um, and I say that say that that your guy who was your mentor might have been part of that. Gym. Yeah, I'm not. I, he's so he was interested because. He will always pull me aside. And just you know, look. I'm gonna teach you this. Well, let me show. I'm gonna show you this. Or he pulled me in a meeting, and he'd be leading the meeting, but he played like he was dumb. And then was you know, when one of the dominant people tried to test him, he would shut him down. And then he would pull me aside and say, "See, this is why I did that," and so on. And so, so he would give me all these li just little gems here and there. And um, I never had the experience that Miss Bo had <laughs> with this guy. It's he all, heard, heard some of the silliness. Yeah, this. yeah, yeah. So it was, it's just a contrast and experience with that particular generation. But like I said, this guy was probably about 15 years older than the guy that she's dealing with. So he would have been born in the late 40s, early early 50s at the latest. Okay. But, um, you know, but he had no problem reaching out to me to help me. And I was, at that time, I was only four years into my career. So I'm very young at the time, but he would give give me any piece of knowledge he could just and not just about the job, but sometimes just about life in general. Right. And um, you know, that was I had a great experience with that, you know. Yeah, and you I, were blessed to find you were blessed to find one of them kind of brothers because those brothers generally don't last long in corporate America and they end up doing their own thing. Mm -hmm. I've had some some good experiences and I've had some mm, experiences, but I've had good experiences with some. Uh, and I, I would say I've had some bad experiences with men and women too. I mean, like, and, and like I said, the women thing is even worse. And, and it's the, the women portion, which I'm not going to get into today, it's bad for all <laughs> women. And it gets even more niche down for black women. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I've seen it with white women and with black women. The only difference is white women can get vicious. I've seen that with my own eyes. They okay. recognize but, some things too, and I've watched that, but that's another video. I don't want to deep yeah, dive. Yeah, that's a whole nother one. Because what I've noticed in my work uh, experience, most of the white that's women didn't get to their places based on skill. They, well, not skills uh, as far as workplace, but well, I, other I skills. I can't, I can't confirm or deny that because I do know some highly intelligent white people who are engineers, but um, let me just say, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if some did advance for other reasons. Um, but I will say this, and then we're going to go back. The, the, the pick me mentality, it still exists. I, I see some of these people out here in these streets wanting to be like main ones. Now, not everybody's like that, right? Because there's a lot of us, when we do get an opportunity to get together, you know, we're like, okay, do this, do this. You know what I mean? Like, and we try to help each other. But this pick me thing is deep. I'm going to move on to the next one and I'll go back to number one. This is the last one. We don't have like a sustained history of where we are banding together because every time we get together, we've always had to disband. Like I always have the running joke with some people. Like if you're, when you, you know, like when we see like a group of us or whatever, or like, yeah. Weekend, whatever, whatever. What happens is, I always give them like, I oh, don't know, the census is getting high. We better disband before they think we're plotting a coup or something, right? You know, the census is high. But I just find that we don't have this sustained history where we've had an opportunity to to band together. So, you know, like um, though a the Asian communities, um, they will when they're forced to band together, the Jewish community, you know, even when they don't, even when they they could be in disagreement about something, but if it's an attack on anyone that is remotely close to their own, they shut it down. Mm -hmm. well, black people, we don't we with our other think, black people. I think part of that just kind of, we've been, we, we're demonizing when we do that. 
or you know where yeah where it's presented not you know and as Dee Chavez say by the dominant society we do that and we get demonized we and you know criminalized well, whatever well this is what i find and this is and and just to talk about others in the other group i think when you're saying band together you mean like in a workplace generally uh, let's say asians you don't see them band together in our kind of environment because generally if they're band together they work outside of the environment that we work in they are either in their private com company and that will go same with the other groups we're the only group that really they band together to form their own they band together when they're not in right their well oh, well I, I i've yet to see let's say in our environment to see a um significant number of asians like gather like that i i've <laughs> rarely seen many. that yeah, huh? there's not many of them and plus don't get me right. wrong this right. And that, that goes to the point. That's because a lot of them are working in private industries outside of, or whatever. They're working for outside themselves. Outside where we are, yeah. But so what I'm working saying for themselves. is, regardless of where they are, they band together. They got this whole, like, stop Asian hate thing going. Now, do I think it's wrong what was happening? Yes. But, like, they got, like, a whole... Well, what was happening? Law passed, and I'm like, we can't even get police what, brutality. What, what was happening? Uh, besides propaganda. But anyway... Go cold no, on it. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna go there. about to go hard. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna go there. But I, I, no, but I will say this. I will say this. I think we do band together in the right environment. However, the history of us not banding together. If we're working for folks, that's why. And when we're working for folks, it's a different environment. Like prime example, uh, anytime we do get together, let's say uh, three two or three brothers are together and we just maybe i don't know finish getting out of a meeting or maybe talking about something that happened on monday night football what mm -hmm. i don't like and i've seen this happen several times that uh and i had to check one fool for this um a lot of times we could be talking about something and some white man will just jump in or a, particularly a white man will jump in and just no not excuse me oh i'm sorry fellas is the other Hey, such and such and this that I, I need to talk to you or something like that. They they just jump into the the conversation and just disrupt what we were talking about. And I never forget this one time because of the kind of environment we worked in. That I was it was me, uh, one buddy of mine. He he's a he's a blue badger, and uh, me and another guy. We were he, not blue badgers, right? And this one white guy, or the guy from Dominant Society, because we were talking, I can't remember what the what what it was we were talking about. Nonetheless, this man jumps into our conversation. Now, generally, like I said, I observe and I watch. Mm -hmm. But but if you but if I find somebody, I I, I I call myself being like an old school hunter. Um, if I find prey that's in the target and they're not covered, oh, I'm cutting throats. So this one gentleman. <laughs> decided to jump in our conversation and luck my boy like i said he had the blue badge oh by the way that's me texting you because you know why i text oh. you okay he knows why i text you too okay you know what i'm saying he's you know on one team of whatever and anyway the other guy he didn't have the proper proper uh credentials uh, <laughs> yeah and he came and talked and i looked i looked at him I'm like uh, and I was hoping my boy with the, you know, who had the right credentials would put him in check, but I saw he didn't do that. So I had to throw the hammer on this dude. I was oh like, gosh. I was like, because, you know, I knew he wasn't in my group. He didn't work under any ramifications would come to me. So I knew I had to clear to cut his throat. <laughs> so, so, uh, oh my goodness, he stepped in and I was like, yep, I got, I got a live one. Now. I got a clean shot. Anyway, he stepped in. I was like, hey, excuse me. I don't know how you were raised, but when you come in front and people uh, are talking, you say, excuse me. Cause you know, <laughs> like, I don't know what you're doing right now, but we're talking and we might have a conversation that's need to know. And you may not need to know this. And he was like, he looked and he saw my other boy and he was like, oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I said, yeah, you're very sorry. So don't let that happen again. Oh, you went in on him. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that's because so I get tired of those folks thinking that they can just come in and in charge of us. And they have this natural attitude to think that. So anyway, 
I say that to say about banding together. Yeah, we, we can, but it depends on the environment. So, gotcha. That's All right. Funny. Well, I want to go back to your favorite one. So, I said <laughs> no unity or loyalty, and you say we don't have a codified behavior. We have we're basically right. exhibiting off code behavior. So this is my right. thing. I know you go for the jugular. And I'm just not that hard. You're like, we got to shame everybody. We got to. Like, well, at this point, we don't have any mechanism to punish people who who don't have who are off code behavior. That's the only way that things happen. And people learn is that you have to have some form of punishment. Right now, there is no punishment for being disloyal or to being off code or being a straight up coon. Matter of fact, the coon is being rewarded. So somehow or some way we have to figure this out in the next whatever years of creating but, some kind of environment to punish. What? See, no, it's not tearing down. It's understanding the boundaries. You're out of bound and you're off code. What do you want to do? Of, huh? <laughs> what do you really want to do? Because what do you mean what I want to do? You are tough. Like you would probably make me cry. And then I got to like fight. I you mean, we we, uh, we we are living in a tough environment. And we need to be tough. I, I, I just don't yeah, like so what do because wanna... what we've been doing is not working. So we need to do what works. I, I still feel like what do you want to do? Now, before you answer that, I'm gonna bring up a scenario since you say that we don't have consequences, there's no shaming, there's no removing people from the community, right? Let's take somebody like Terry Cruz. What would you have us do? It's still a whole what do you mean? He right now saying, we we have no form we have no way of punishing him and i'm we saying can't affect is, his money what do you, what we can't the, affect his money I mean, hold on, we can't me, affect him from just, working somebody fill me in on the terry cruz thing because i i don't follow him very much i mean i know well, who he is and i know well have you you've seen some of his all his behavior and how he's acted uh towards folks within with, with folks part of the dominant society and go out of his way to basically be a minstrel. I'm gonna be honest. I don't follow him. Like I mean, I see him in movies. He's always playing the big. Obviously, he's a big buff guy. He, he always plays that role. I seen him on what's that show he hosts thing. now? America's Got Talent or whatever. I seen him on okay. that. But and like some of his. And, 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 well, you have to see some of his interviews. What I would want you to do is just look up some articles where they've interviewed and asked him certain questions in regarding okay. to interviewing with black black folks or black society. And then okay. that way you kind of get a better um, okay. viewpoint and understanding where we're coming from. And okay. he, he's exhibited a lot of uh, buffoonish yeah, yeah. and coonish behavior. In those I don't answers. know. No, no, I'm, I'm talking sorry. about within his within his within his answering and talking with folks in the sure. dominant society sure. in regards to black folks and black okay. society. Candace Owens, we'll say Candace Owens again. I can't even take again, her seriously. So she, like, is, she is, again, she's not one of us. That's number one. Her family's not from this area. She's not, um, her background doesn't lend itself. So, you know, we have so to I understand was, that aspect. I was, was going to say, I was going um, to say something about that before we start. Her family is to West it. Indian. Oh, I didn't know that about her. But I was going I was going to uh, say something about that um, for a second. And, you know, we kind of started going on. But how do you dish out consequences or how do you determine if somebody's actually being a certain way without knowing their background? Like, you know, some some people, hey, you grew up, let's say you're a black guy, but you grew up in the middle of Iowa. You're the only black guy. So you grew up around all white people and you know, okay. As long as setting, you are not as long as you're not speaking disparaging about black folks, mm -hmm. as long as you're not tearing black people down mm -hmm. and you're not trying to put yourself like I'm kind of special, and this is the reason why these niggas are this, that, and the other. And you kind of <laughs> act in a certain way. YouTube does huh? not like that. <laughs> Say what? YouTube does not like the end oh. <laughs> oh my bad. They act like some of these yeah. schools, like some you know X, Y, these N words or whatever. So, um, you know that would be off cold behavior. Anytime you are speaking disparaging uh, black society within mixed company. That mm -hmm. one's that's off cold behavior. Okay, right, I see. I, I follow you now. No, you still haven't answered. What would you have us do? At this point in time, we don't have anything. But if we need to somehow either build some kind of build some kind of economy, we have to build some kind of systems in place 
where the person can be either ostracized or we affect his or affect his um economics. I That's think we'll I think we'll all be in the ground by the time that <laughs> by the time that well, happens. Again, but we have to figure something out because right now there is nothing in place that no, we let have me, to, um, to punish to punish people who are off code yeah. behavior. He tried to come back to the community, right? But let me let who? me throw this Stacy Dash. Yeah, she's somewhat been ostracized, right? I mean, she's in the she is the extreme. She is the extreme, and look what it had to take for for folks to kind of really get to that point with her. And I'm I'm willing to say there's still people who probably, particularly men, who are willing to probably bring her, let her come back. Say, to be honest, I know Stacy Dash from like one movie, <laughs> and all the crazy stuff she talks about. She says, right? Like, she, she, Stacey Dash she really? Stopped. But I'm saying, but her her words and her actions, what she said about black society, is enough. To be, she needs to be punished. Kanye right. West. Kanye West will be another one with some of his antics. Yes. See, but we need to have some kind of we need to have some kind of things in place I to punish folks. Yeah, I mean, Kanye is is interesting. I'm like, dude, I'm on to your game. You do all this crazy stuff when you're about to release something. You're about well, to release the an album. Is, the Some dude is sick or something crazy like no, that. No, the, the dude is the dude is sick and he is on medication. So. <laughs> he is, he is, but I don't think he's as crazy as we think he is. Uh, he, he no, and he's, that's why he's I said quiet. Uh, and we need to have something to in something place big. to punish folks. Unfortunately, we don't have anything at this point in time to punish people. Well, I, and I would even say just um, to pr I don't know how to I don't know how, how to articulate it properly, but. Just to say, hey, you know, publicly say, hey, look, man, that ain't what you did is not cool. And this is why, blah, blah. Because a lot of them, nobody ever comes well, see, back at them with any, you know, any type of um, rebuttal. But yeah, or, you could say or, that, but you don't have a but, but you're right. But what happens is that folks from the dominant society will reward them. So sure. that's the other aspect of it. So we have nothing in place. Like I said, the coon is getting rewarded, whereas, you know, we have we need to have something in place. I don't know if I, I don't know if we have any of y'all remember this movie called The Drop Squad. I don't. I don't remember. Oh, okay. I don't remember that title. But, uh, no, but I, I just mean that, but, you know it's, it's very rare that I see somebody you know when, when somebody does something uh, a, Can a Candace Owens or you know Stacey Dash or whatever. It's very rare that I hear somebody from you know a, a, you know somebody from or another black person of prominence. You know, come and say, look, nah, you're way off base with that. You need to check that. You know, you know it's very rare that I hear somebody do that. I, you know, I'll hear somebody. But even like, if they know, did, they don't. They show, can't. But, but even if they said that, if they even rep, you know, said some verbal, they still won't affect her financially or any other kind of league. Well, then why is Stacey Dash feeling apologetic? And they were too. That's because. Talk. That's because. Yeah. Okay, uh, the, one of our other friends uh, who on YouTube always says this, Professor Black Truth. When uh, white supremacy is done with their tools, yeah. they usually break them. She's broken. White supremacy has used them up, broke her, <coughs> and they have no use for her anymore. Well, so she has nothing else to go to. And, and huh? Tiger Woods, Terry what Cruz. About, he, well, he Terry Cruz, has, he hasn't been broken yet. Tiger Woods has been broken. No, yeah, the dominant, so the mean, dominant Tiger, society broke him. Tiger, I mean, Tiger Woods can ride on. Look, F, F, F all of y'all do what I want to do. I'm, I'm, I'm no, mean, but he, he, he could do uh, that. A lot he, of, he lost a lot of his sponsorship. Well, but you know, Tiger Woods is an anomaly, but anyway, yeah, nonetheless, I mean, as far as black folks, we have nothing to, to put in place to punish these folks. So, yeah, that's what we need. We need to have something in place to punish people. When they have, when they demonstrate off code behavior, yeah. So, but why do we have to punish? And I say this because uh, why? Because if not, we well, will have. They don't want to. They don't want to be associated with black people or anything. Anyway, what, what's the point of punishing? Like, for what? They don't. The reason why they don't want to be associated because there's no. They see no benefit in it. So we need to have something to. Not only this, they want to be black when it's convenient. When it's when it's convenient, huh? I say let them go. Right. Yeah. I agree with you. I say let them go. But see, what happens is white uh, folks from the dominant society will use them to pit against us. 
So with, when, when they're being used in that aspect, we need to have something to combat that so when they're off code that they get punished. I don't know. I'm like, hey. Because you- that's what happens. They, they, they get used. The folks in the dominant society will use them against black society. I mean, I do believe that happens, but I think ultimately if people want to whatever I say, let them go. Like, like that, that's it's not the- about it's not about letting them go. It's about no, you can't. We need to have something to combat the damage. So I'm not okay. saying I'm not saying we bringing them back in. No, they need to be punished for, for doing some action against us. Gotcha. Well, what's going on with Stacey Dash? Is she let back in? No. I, well, I wouldn't let her back in, but no, I think she's. I think she's. The question I is, think she's she in, the same, in the first place. I, well, yes and no. <laughs> she was. She was in until she opened her mouth. <laughs> okay, I got you. <laughs> but, but. Uh, but uh, uh, I think really where she is now, she's almost she's probably worse than where Oprah and Gail are, and it took a long time for Oprah and Gail to get to where they are. But I, where is Oprah other than again? I can do. She it. Had, I she's lost I all her. You guys she's she's lost all her credibility within Black society. So she That's really and which no what which is a danger for her. Because she can no longer be used as a tool for white society, and what and as our as our brother Professor Black Truth has said, when white supremacy is done with their tools, they generally break them. So yeah. it may just be a matter if she can't be u- be useful as a tool against black society. Don't it, don't be surprised long something mysteriously uh, come out from about her back in the day or something to punish to, to make to break her. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I mean, it's just certain people I look at. I'm like, do they really care at this point? No, like, but they have. But we got to be honest. Oprah had a lot of influence within Black society. But yeah, I I think she's a tough example because she had a lot. She had a lot of influence in society. Period. Why? Yeah. So it's like, I yeah, think she's she a, did. I think she's she a did. bad example. She, she did, but uh, before she had a society and overall uh, influence in overall society, she first had a huge impact on black society. Nah. Man. Oh, man. I, I don't know. I'm not an Oprah hater or Oprah fan. She's just Oprah to me. But <laughs> I, I'm disappointed. I examine the record, so I don't have to be a hater. I just you look at her record and see what she's done over the years, and you decide how you feel about it from that. Right, right. So yeah, I, I, you know, I. And you, you, you've looked a lot deeper into it than I have because I don't know what she's done or not done other than a TV show, a book club, and blowing up in the media, in the media uh, world. Yeah, you re-exam- I, what you need to do is re-examine a lot of her words, particularly her in, her influence and what she said, particularly about black men Okay. over the years. Okay. I don't know. I'll, I'll, look, I'll, I'll look into that. We'll, we'll come back to it another time. Yeah. Well, so I get so my question of punishment. Okay. I guess I guess the opposite example would be uh the white girl posing as the black girl, Rachel Dolezal. She got she got it's almost like she got punished by her folks. Like she can't get a right. Job. You know, you know <laughs> you notice, but I, I I need I need and I'm glad you brought that up. Notice in white society how they have punishment for when white people are off code. When right. white people speak against outside of what uh, the norms of white society, and a lot of times they get broken, they yeah, break they broke, their. They broke the hell out of her. <laughs> well, well, not just her, but if you look at any any wh- white person who's done anything positive to, to help black folks to a certain degree, mm-hmm. they've uh, they've there's been some. If you look at like prime examples, like some policemen who have uh, white policemen who have tried to you know go on the record on the giving justice to black folks a lot of times those cops end up getting fired uh being punished threatened yeah yeah um same in the workforce as well if a black person gets a certain kind of the white person uh promotes a black person over a white person though and a lot of folks in the upper management might they may punish that person and then and that um in that uh organization i mean it's just the history goes on and on you can see it yeah 
Um, but well, they, and, and so that goes back to my point. They have a code of behavior, if you notice. They punish those who are off code. They have a codified behavior. I just want to get back to the stabbing and the crabbing. I, I just mean like <laughs> stop stabbing and crabbing. It just, like we're crabs in the barrel. We don't want anyone to see. Well, that's the problem. Crab a crab crabbing. ain't supposed to be in a barrel. Huh? A crab ain't supposed to be in a barrel. So a crab is going to act different because he ain't supposed to be in a barrel. There's a lot of things that aren't supposed to be in a the barrel. They don't act like that. <laughs> right. Uh, okay. I, I, well. I mean, but to use a crab in a barrel, I'm just saying that's why they do that because the crab is in an unnatural environment and they're always going to do that. Frogs and birds and everything else. They don't keep you to the ladder, but they don't keep each other down. Yeah, I, I, I have to observe that. I don't know, but I'm just saying <laughs> that's just not natural for crabs to be. And that's why they do that. That's my point. In a barrel, either why the crabs huh? doing this, but it's not. I, look, I, I'm just saying, I'm not gonna relent on that. I'm like, it's not natural for other things to be in a barrel, yet they right. like that. The crab, I don't, I don't, I don't know, but that's the analogy since we're using the crab in the barrel analogy. That's what I'm saying. Oh my gosh. I, well, what's up with the stabbing? Like, I don't understand why we want to stab each other so much because a lot of us we've been taught over the years through the system of white supremacy. That black has no value and white is white is superior, and so a lot of times black folks take look at black, a lot of black folks look at other yeah. black folks through a white man's yeah. eyes. Yeah. How so do you they that? have no value and they see you as no value, yeah. and he's like, "Oh, this this n word ain't worth the game." How do you explain the men who? Huh? How do you explain men who are shady to women? Now I'm talking black on black. When women are like, "No, I'm not trying to give you the poon." And they're like, oh, well, that's a whole nother story right there. Oh, that's that look. You don't want to sleep with him? I'm so a black man at home. I got a whole husband at home. And because yeah. I won't sleep with you? Yeah, that's that's that's, something, that's a whole nother story. That's a I think we're going outside of this. The, that, we're talking about individuals. Stab you in the back. Yeah. No, that's that's something different. That's not the stab the back. He, he, I don't think he's trying to stab you in the back. <laughs> well, he is, but I think he's trying to stab something else. <laughs> well, <laughs> so I don't know if that's it. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay, yeah, I don't right. think it's the right. I don't think it's the same. I'm talking about two different things. Yeah, that's apples and bananas. Apples and bananas. Well, I'm just saying. <laughs> I just find that they've been just vicious. I'm like, you mean to tell me in this IT environment, if you find a, a woman who's a highly competent person who just because she doesn't want to sleep with you, like you're gonna behave this way? But, no hey, I. I I can't speak to that because I know I've never done that and I don't know many dudes that I know. Well, I guess I wouldn't know that though they tried to mess like that. But I mean, I don't know the numbers on that, particularly if you're talking about black men who are in positions of authority. Yes. Um, not. So right yes. there, that's huh? Yes. So right in there. Not. Authority huh? or not. Authority or not in a position of authority. Look, okay. I, I'm not going to get into everything that has happened in my career. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't feel like this is what we're I, doing. Again, like I said, I, I can't speak to that particular dude because he sounds like a creep. Um, but I don't think that's, I don't think that's, I don't think what you're talking about, that's the norm. I don't know. I mean, my collection of experiences, I've seen some things over <laughs> and over and they came out wrong. Over and over and over again. I, and I see I, dead I, people. <laughs> if you I, I just kind of feel like if you have an opportunity to influence minds and to gain a synergistic relationship with people who look like us, regardless of gender. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. 
And I have seen some vicious. <clears throat> it's I've been a victim of some vicious things. I know what it's like to, you know, experience some things. And you know, we've talked about this before. I, Hold on one second. Hold on. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It is yeah. crazy. And I'm just yeah. kind of like, you know, I still feel like this is part of the conversation. If you don't get the opportunity to gain whatever it is that you're looking to gain, there's still no loyalty. Right. There's no loyalty. If anything, they're trying to um, exert their dominance on women. Right. Absolutely. I was going to say, that's a, I can't speak from that position because obviously <laughs> I've never been in that position. But. And I'm like, are you seriously? Yeah. No, no. I don't, I mean, like I said, I, I believe you want, I believe it a hundred percent, but, um, yeah, you know, that's not obvious. Like I said, obviously that's not been my experience, but you know, my experience has just been more, like I said, it was the more of my white managers that had my back and the one black program manager I had was the one that stabbed me in the back. And I'm like, dad, really? It's funny because. You know, I should pull up my thing while we're talking about it. Hold on a second, because you know my little shameless, shameless. Well, hold on a second. Uh, uh, let me go to this. Is what I'm working on. I know you're like, what is she doing now? Well, share screen. Bring that up. So, because since we brought it up, this is. <laughs> <laughs> Working on this. Got a cross market. No, yes. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, sorry Asia. about that. Yeah, you got a, so, got a cross working on second book. <laughs> Talk about who was an ally and recognizing that. No, I mean, the other thing, the easy way to do that exactly is actually what Disha was talking about earlier. You just keep everybody at arm's length until they prove themselves. And even when you do, even when you do. I mean, some people are going to slip through the cracks, but for the most part, I think you keep them at arm's length. Eventually. You'll, you know, they'll show their, they'll show their colors. I'll never forget. It was six o'clock in the morning. This one guy came in. Now I didn't have my hair braided. Mm -hmm. I think I had my hair straight that day. I don't remember. This is like pre-pandemic, maybe three or four years ago. Mm -hmm. Little slimmer and everything, so you know, popping and locking, and fitter finer, <laughs> as you like to call it. My, my, my fitter, my finer fitter, my fitter finer younger self. <laughs> what did I say? Oh my goodness, I forgot what my little saying is. But anyway. So this dingling comes in, different dingling comes in, and I'm. Uh -huh. It's like six o'clock in the morning, and he came in because he came in and knew that no one was in. Uh -huh. He was like, "Damn, you so bad. I would never listen to you. You would talk. I would never pay attention to. You. I would never listen to you. Really? I'm trying to six o'clock in the morning. All I'm Damn. trying to get that. I'm trying to, all this other stuff. Now, now, granted, everything was still put together and everything. I was like, did he just say that out loud? Did he say that in the off? Damn. Out of the phone, yeah, you, you work with a lot of unprofessional brothers. That's what it That's sounds like. And, it, wait, and, was, and you said he was from, was he from D.C. too? <laughs> I don't know. All I know is it was six o'clock in the morning and I was typing. So, you know, like, your, your even if I was, even if I was thinking that, I wouldn't say it. I, I again, like I, I was, I was telling, I was telling uh, Miss Bo before, like a lot of dudes from DC, their priorities are just different. Their priorities are really different that I've noticed that I've come to find over the years that I've been in the DC area. Yeah, God, I mean that's yeah, wow. And the way how they interact and they value certain things, their priorities and values are a little different from. Other black folks with the, in other parts of the country. That's what I've noticed. There's, it's what was it? The wild, wild, wild. This is why I'm trying to figure out how to get out of engineering. I think I did a uh, video when I first 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 started. You know, I've been doing this for all of two months, and I was doing it on. I think it's on black women in uh, STEM or engineers, or whatever, and why we're leaving. And we're already so like poorly un, um, underrepresented, mm -hmm. and. It's actually going backwards. It's getting worse. And we're not entering in engineering fields as much. And then when we are in the career fields, we're exiting. And it's bad. It's like 
I'm like, I'm ready to exit. I'm like, I'm exhausted. I mean, like, I have to be like, you know, my paranoia is quite high. So like, I have to be that much better than my coworkers. Like, mm-hmm. I just have to, like, I don't feel comfortable. Yeah, like, I think that's a combination of things, but it's a different kind of a different discussion. But I, th- I think it's part of what, you know, what we're talking about here, but I think it's a combination of of other factors that we see just in the STEM world. And the ding dong, the ding dong from, um, was it last week? Mm-hmm. He was always making comments like, you know, you, you were so much so someone so you ain't my type. I'm like, I didn't know that I was trying to be your type. Right. And what I wanted yeah. was, homie, like, seriously, like, I would never even let you sniff it. Like, what is going on? <laughs> like, so what, what, what are we doing? Like, we're not even, I, I just want you to go ahead and get me the, these system attributes. That's all right. I need. Right. Like, and do it. That's what I wanted to say. It's like, I need you. Uh, I need how about you go over there and build a diagram? <laughs> well, again, that kind of goes back to, I, I remember I was telling you this, that one of our um, ancestors talks about well, not I guess one of our elders, not ancestors, because he's still alive. Uh, always talks about as far as black folks, and he's also the one who always talks about code of behavior, right? Code of high behavior. Uh, mm-hmm. Brother Neely Fuller, that really black folks, for the most part, unless we're talking about doing something constructive and pro- positive, it's best that we generally don't interact with each other, unless we're doing something constructive and positive. And I think that, that's and what you're point saying, point that worked. What you give an example of, he it sounds like that. That's definitely an example of where his uh, well, saying his whole way. Well, if that's the case, then I would have never had a conversation with CBR kid or you or whatever, right? Like, but I'm pretty sure you guys were talking about something, or we were talking about something positive and constructive. No, we were talking about sports. <laughs> I don't think so, because I I generally don't. Engaged. Yeah, I was talking about me and CBR kid. We weren't talking about how to uplift the community. We we're like uh, <laughs> food, sports. Like there was, there was nothing that was uplifting. It was like all like this you know, general conversation. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, like I said, I, I, and, and there's some some truth to what Nelly Fuller said. I mean, for the most part, a lot of black folks, some of our folks, don't know how to talk about something constructive. We just talk about a lot of BS. And when you talk about a lot of BS, it leads to BS. An old song with nothing okay, leads, nothing, CBR, nothing is, is something that leads to nothing. No, <laughs> our kid did not come and say, you know, you a little yellow shorty, you ain't even my. Say <laughs> <The> what? <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> no, that That's was the other guy. <laughs> you know it, it, it just like, like, oh my god, what makes you think that? Like, it, it's just so dumb. Yeah, it's yeah. I, I've seen and that. Not only that, it's like, why is no, my like the, phone? A I thing? think I told you the first time I heard that type of discussion. I thought you guys were just joking, like bantering back and forth. It's I didn't know. He, I, yeah, I didn't realize that he, you know, he's that was his like opening statement or approach or whatever. I was like, but. Nice. Uh, but, but see, that even goes back to what Nelly Fuller says, uh, and I'm not trying to make him like a god or that, but some of his stuff is on point. And like, unless we're talking about something constructive, for the most part, yeah, we don't need to be talking to some of these fools. So they ain't talking about nothing. He's they ain't not, bringing that to the table. Huh? He, he's not, for sure. He, he's. I've never met anybody that old and that stupid. I, I was just so embarrassed for him. He doesn't even, you know what? He he even he, he just I, he just oh gosh, like yeah. he's missing a few chromosomes. Like even the way he talks, like, uh, 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 I'm like, why are you talking like that? Like just speak regular. I'm not asking you to speak the king's English, but he what did he have a DC accent or was it? I don't know what kind of accent that is. It's yeah, I, it's, not, does it. It, it's 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 the ignorant accent. It's it's stuff like yeah, yeah like a sambo. I mean, uh, uh, oh, sweat. oh, Nick, Nick. You oh, know what? You, you, think about, you think about the, um, I guess, the stereotypical older slick dude, right? That's kind of how he tries to talk. You're kinda right. How he talks. You're right because he like was Big Red like, from the Five Heartbeats. Yeah, well, not, maybe not that bad, but along those lines. You know what he did? Oh, I'll give you an example. He came in one day and he said something like, oh, something like, you know, you like a little shorty that I don't even know what the heck he said. 
And I was so irritated. And it came out like foot and mouth disease. I was like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, he's just somebody you don't need to engage, engage in conversations it's, it's, because yeah, he's not, he's never not serious. Like you because I was like, I wish he would bring somebody home who said some craziness like this. I said, first of all, anybody who had ever stepped to me and was talking to me like that, I said, first of all, they would never get my time. He's like, oh, no, that's just a little something, something you just say. I'm like, not to me. <laughs> He's like, well, you grew up different. I'm like, I guess so. Because my father took me on my first date. So, you know, I went to like a contemporary jazz concert and everything. So, you know, I'm like, I don't know about this whole shorty thing. Don't call me shorty. First of all, I have a name at work and go get me my system attributes. How about that? Can you go get some system mm -hmm. attributes? And then he was saying like this dumb stuff, like, you know, I can't well, it's deal with you. Know, like, it's just interesting, like, with that conversation. I'm like, that's not a conversation I would have with any woman at work. I'm like, that's. And it's oh, like cer that. certain language, I'm, you know, I mean, we all had, you know, we get in our circles or whatever. We may, you know, we'll, our jargon may change, but jargon is the right word. Yeah, our jargon may change. But unless I'm like, you're somebody that I really, really know and I'm really, really cool with outside of work as well as at work, I'm not going to say that kind of stuff. I'm not going to talk I like that. First of all, the fact that you think. And then I'm not going to do it out loud where everybody else can hear it. Exactly. Like, who, why would you think that's okay to talk to me like this if I am not worthy of respect, but you'll respect everybody else? Mm -hmm. And why do you think that it's funny? Like, it's not funny. I'm like, no, Bama. Like, I need you to. Can you go get me some system attributes to make sure? That you're right? <laughs> because I need to architect some stuff, and your stuff is <sighs> your stuff is wrong. It's not yeah. good. And I'm like. Oh, I was just so irritated. There's no loyalty. There's no unity. There's no respect. And then when you say no and bruise somebody's feelings, they want to go make up stuff. I'm like, well, it is something. I am now. I'm like, I can't even sit at my desk and not talk to you without it being a problem. Like, I literally just didn't even want to talk to him. I wouldn't talk to him. I wouldn't even answer email. And whenever you put me on email without the right people, I would put like management on it. I just feel like there's no loyalty. And I kind of feel like even if you like some of the things he was saying is really problematic. My job is not to go and try to ruin this man's life. Because mm -hmm. this whole families, this is like you represent the whole family. The thing is you don't have, I mean, what we talked about, we talked about earlier before Disha Baskin with the whole punishment thing. It's like, it'll happen on its own anyway. You know, whether whether we you know whether we're there to see it or not whether we're the ones to dish out the punishment or not it'll happen on its own anyway i just feel like uh, I, I i don't see it that way because if we don't if we don't put something in place it's going to just this is why black folks are in the same position that we've been for the last 500 years we have not created some kind of system in place to punish those who have been judas back backbiters traitors and what if you if you look at even the history of the uh even though haiti today is in a bad state but how they got out of the yokes of slavery is that they mm -hmm. created a code of behavior and the first thing that they did if you know the history of haiti they punished those who were off code uh some of the punishment they of course they killed poisoned those who were off code behavior and once they created that atmosphere to understand that you either on our team and if you're not on the team, you will suffer the consequences of death. So I'm not saying we go to that extreme, but right. you get my point. I'm saying that they created an atmosphere to understand either you're going to be on code or you're, and if you're off code, you're going to be off world. Off world. That's, that's kind of <laughs> thing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know that that'll ever. No, happen. I'm just saying that's what that, I said. That's what that I, mean, I, I know what you mean. I, I know what you mean on something, on something parallel to that. But not to those extremes, but parallel to that. And I don't know that that'll ever happen here. But yeah, it, I don't know. I, I really. Well, that's the only, in my opinion, that's the only way how we can combat mm -hmm. the system of white supremacy and to advance us as a people. Is that we have to have some um, uh, uh, um, codified behavior and. Uh, uh, um, appropriate actions amongst each other. Right. Well, like I said, I, I, I just wanted to wrap it up because I know you guys were really like um, 
super cool to come on. I know it's Friday night. Um, I I just feel like we're constantly stabbing and crabbing each other. And regardless of whether it's a natural habitat or not, um, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. I I, I was just like, I mean, I, I I went through another scenario. There's I have several scenarios. I think I just I felt early on in my career I felt foolish for thinking, oh, I'm gonna help, you know, someone mm-hmm. like me. And particularly, I think because remember in a previous slide I talked about when I was applying to schools, I applied to one historical black college university. And I had planned on attending that particular school until mm-hmm. the administration was so yucky. Mm-hmm. And so I, I had since attended two PWIs, predominantly white institutions. And I think because I did not get that Black experience, right? Even though I have Black friends, I have Black friends, I had a lot of white friends too. I felt like I wanted to have that thing. I don't know what that thing was, Mm -hmm. but I thought, I foolishly thought, foolishly thought that when I would see other people who looked like me, that, you know, we would have the same, you know, I I didn't learn it until later that not all skin folk are kin folk. Um, I've learned, according to my book that's coming up, let me go ahead and just drop that in there one more time, you know, shameless plug, who know who is an ally, Uh okay? No, he's an ally. I need to get that old logo taken off of that book, too. But know who was an ally. Because at mm-hmm. the end of the day, I'm thinking people who look like me were allies when they weren't. They weren't yeah. my ally. I wound up having people who didn't look like me, and I know you don't subscribe to that, but there were people who did not look like me who not only were mentors, but they were sponsors. Yeah, I've, I've, I've had a very similar experience, man. You know, a lot of my there are people who are like, "Hey, I recommend her for this." Yeah. I wasn't a threat. That's part of it. Yeah, it's it's interesting because even like even the company I work for now, when I started, you know, we talked about you know long term goals and things like that. And I said, eventually, I think I may want to start my own company. And I was sitting, and this is one of the company owners at the time that I was talking with, and he said, "Well, if you want to do that." Let me know. I'll walk you through it. I'll help you with it. I'll, sh- you know, I'll show you how to do it because I don't look at it as competition. I look at it as a potential partner later on down the road. But he was willing to take and help me get through a process whenever I got to that point where I wanted to do it. Yeah, my and- husband used to work for himself for a while, actually. So, like, it is beneficial for them to actually to bring you on as a partner. Right. And I, and I-, I mean, it's beneficial, but nobody else ever offered to walk me through it. And a lot of Black people won't. We found that when we were working for ourselves for a while, like the black people were the hardest ones to work with. It'd be mm-hmm. the white ones who were like, hey, do this, do that. Here's a contract you can get started working on. Mm-hmm. Here, let me give you this so you can do your rate markup. Showing mm-hmm. you how to do rate markups. Now, I'm not saying all black people were bad. What I am saying is, it's, it's, it, I foolishly thought, you know, because I, when I didn't get that that HBCU experience, mm-hmm. and I'm thinking, oh, oh, but you know what? Not everybody with the same mind. They're like, it's, it's like, I'm going to get mine. It's very interesting. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say that's foolish. I mean, that's, uh, okay. no, was- I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say foolish. Maybe, maybe I- a better word. Wait, I think maybe a better word might be quixotic, but not foolish. Um, it was foolish. <laughs> but, <laughs> I was so but, I was so ignorant. But, I was literally like, no, in I was like, no, uh, maybe, it, like I said, it may be in quixotic, a little bit more innocence to it, but foolish, I think, is too strong of a word. And I, 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 really I believe, uh, here, here's my, here's my thing. I truly believe in black folks. And I think mm-hmm. that the thing is, we have to understand who to be unified with, how to unify, and find those folks. Like you said, not all skin folks are kin folks. With w- what happened when we left the um, the killing fields and the plantations within the the, the um, uh, of the South and after slavery, 
got to remember, a lot of the gumbos and the sambos left, too. We didn't handle them at first. Those people should have been dealt with the first time. Because what happens, what, what some people believe, um, cooning is generational. And, <laughs> and, uh, I, and, and, and just to use another analogy, you know, and the Bible said, you know, for the, the folks who would be saved, only 144,000, that ain't a lot of folks. So not all of us are going to make it in this. Remember, we are, since we've been here, we've been in, for lack of a better word, a, a form of warfare. And not everybody going to make it through that war. But we got to understand we believe in the battle and believe that there is going to be victory and that there's going to be some casualties. In that. So if you look at it from that perspective, well, so this is the way I look at it now. I mean, I know we got to like, you know, I actually don't see my my white my white counterparts as the enemy. I do uh, well. it with my eyes wide open. But one thing I will say is I would try and try and try to work with my people. And the ones who've done just as much or more backstabbing has been my people, and it hurt more. That's not to say that I haven't experienced crazy with white people, and I'm not trying to give them credit for not being a-holes. What I am saying is I have to take people as they come to me. I can't live in that space of constantly thinking, like, you're the enemy, when the very people I thought that were, were going to be, like, they weren't. Mm -hmm. They weren't. Well, there are people okay. who really checked on me medically when I had, was dealing with something who looked nothing like me, and the black people couldn't even pick up a phone. So I'm like, wait a second. So that that challenges your moral foundation because ethics are personal and they're learned. Well, no, I don't think it challenges. It, I, I it said, did. yes, it did. I, I don't think so because of the fact, like I said, I don't. But just because you're black does not necessarily mean that you you're part of the team or part of the uh, who who we should be unified with. And just now, like I said, mean that they're they're, they're what? Actually, and just because they're white doesn't mean I shouldn't be dealing with them either. I just take well. Them well, here's my thing. I I just have a higher uh, requirement for folks from the dominant society to be a so-called ally. Now, I didn't say you can't be, but I have a requirement, and my standard <laughs> yeah. and my standard of an ally would be someone on the John, uh, John Brown level. Wow. If you're not living that John Brown life, then you really ain't an ally. Prove to me, but I live that John Brown life. So. Well, like I said, I don't treat the people who don't look like me as if like they're some sort of demon. I'm not saying I welcome them with open arms either, right? Like you have to go into things aware, but I, I, I can't live in a space where I'm constantly mad either. I cannot. Well, you don't have to be mad just to be, to be cautious. It's right. like, you know, we, we, we're behind enemy lines. You know? <laughs> I mean, for me, I just, you know, you to me, for me, you'll, you'll show yourself one way or the other, regardless yeah. of what side you're on. Um, yeah. I don't expect anything you're from right. anybody. Uh, you'll just it'll it'll show like well like we were talking talking earlier about the different people that have helped us out and miss well you well you know my former team lead you couldn't get a more white guy than that but unbeknownst to me behind the scenes he was lobbying in my company hey pay this man that's, take care that's of this man huh? that's hmm? but and and his his um now on the flip side the guy before me was also a black guy he didn't rock with him. He was like, look, this guy's been here for six months and he's not doing anything. He's not learning. He's not trying to learn. He's not progressing. So get him out of here. So, you know, his thing was, hey, you came here, you performed, you did the job, you showed, you know, initiative. I think you should be rewarded for that. And he lobbied for that for me. And we couldn't be two more opposite people in terms of our background. But, you know, he's and he's well, you know, he's he's about a straight shooter as they come. Whether he, we disagree on politics, but outside of that, he was in my he was on my side. So I'm like, hey, you you know, to me, 
You showed me, hey, you know, you, and I didn't ask you to do, I didn't ask him to do that. I didn't know he was doing that. So that's called sponsorship. I mean, that's sponsorship. Yep. Yeah. So, well, look, I don't want to hold you guys up. I know it's late. It's 9 50 p.m. on a Friday night. And I still don't know if I have to run up to the northern portion of Maryland tomorrow, almost Delaware. Oh, no. My daughter's across because they've been canceling games, adding them back on. And for those of you who don't know, we are experiencing like 40 days and 40 nights of rain here in Maryland. <laughs> it's just like, da -da 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 like Wizard of Oz. Like, so um, I don't know if the, if the fields are going to be closed. Um, my daughter plays club. So I don't know what my schedule looks like tomorrow. And right now I'm hoping that they cancel everything so I can just have a Saturday to maybe edit a YouTube video right. and take out. Look, I may have to go in here onto this app. I'm not that good using this. I'm used, used to using other tools. I may have to um, edit out the ninja. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Okay. Maybe well, just, yeah, just, just put, a, put a little... Yeah, just put a little uh, blank spot. No, edit it out. But just, you know, gonna happen. Like, you know, video. It's not going to even be pretty. It's just going to be like, cut. Oh, you can just do a voiceover. Ninja. Yeah. No. Just, just put the bleep in there. Boop. Yeah. Good to go. <laughs> I don't know yeah. how to, using the actual YouTube like interface, the editor, I don't know how you to. Have, um, if you have a um, Premiere, Premiere is a tool. No, 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 it's different because see, when you stream this to YouTube, this gets a whole different set of analytics behind me. If I take this down, see, I, I can't write over this. I would have to create a new instance of this video. Mm, okay. You can't, and you can't, like, like I can't take this down and re-edit and, and throw it back up because whatever is for this video, all the analytics, whatever behind it, is there. So I, I have to use the tool that comes with it since it's streaming directly into YouTube versus if I just, if I had streamed it and then said, I'm going to take it down and put it back up, but I streamed this live. So it's different if I was using like iMovie or something, then I can do whatever I want and add things. You know, I have videos that I have yet to upload, which are probably obsolete, like out of, they're probably not current, but I'd like to edit some videos or something. So can you guys pray for a little bit more rain? <laughs> pray for like oh, a yeah. hey. right. Or teach teach your kids, get them and get your kids in on the workshop. Like not, not on this, no, because then they'll, they'll be trying to like start they, they stay trying to start their own channel. So I'm like, no, because if they know how to do this, then they'll be like mm -hmm. that's too smart. So, but look, thank you guys for coming on. I appreciate it. It's 952. Um look, I I I know um Friday nights or Monday nights, depending on we always talk about like I know my channel is supposed to be based off of three main things. One of us being middle-aged motherhood, one of us being a black woman, and the other one I just talk about black culture slash being on a panel. I believe black culture stuff is still necessary, right? Because much of what I see on the panels out there is all related to, I hate men, I hate women. Yeah. I, I'm tired of hearing about that kind of stuff. We have enough people out there doing that. But what we don't have is content for professionals, for Black women, middle-aged women, that's other than that. Right. right? We mm -hmm. don't talk about what is it like to meet, we talk about the dynamics of interracial dating. We don't talk mm -hmm. about... Oh, well... I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know a lot of people want to care about that. But, you know. Oh no, we're gonna do that one next next week. That's. <laughs> I know nothing. Look, I, I'm gonna say this. I know nothing about interracial dating. We are gonna do that one next. Week. <laughs> I know nothing about it. I'm just gonna argue. About that that subject matter, I know nothing about. So I have no expertise in that at all. We are going to do that one next week. The point I'm making is. There's so many topics that we don't discuss. We don't spend enough time talking about generational wealth transfer. What does that mean? How do we obtain it? We don't talk mm -hmm. enough about investment. We don't talk enough about why home ownership is important. Like we understand what happened in the past. What I'm saying is why is it important? We don't talk about other things related to our health. We don't talk about like what happens if you're raising children that are teenagers? What does that mean when you're raising a young man versus a young woman? What does that mean when we talk about being educated, of teaching entrepreneurship, 
or mm -hmm. we should just go to school. So those kinds of conversations are not being had. We don't talk about um, the down ballot, why, why there's importance on the down ballot. We don't talk about why we're so much of a consumer versus uh, creators and builders. Um, mm -hmm. go on and on and on, right? Like we don't seem to have a lot of those discussions, but we love getting on these panels and talking about this is what you need to catch a black man. This is what you need to catch him. Like having these relationships discussions, and it, it kills me about them so it, much. It would be, you know, it real be nice a lot. I love it. <laughs> like some of these women start talking about how to catch a man. How about learn how to cook a cook a nice meal? Oh. Let, let, let's go to that. Let's go to that. <laughs> Why are women Pre prepare, men? prepare a table? Hold on a second. <laughs> Why are women constantly going to men for this information? Huh? We think about this. Women are constantly asking men about those things when what? they should be going to marry. They should be going to marry women. How did you do it? That's true. Because these new age, these new age men are on some other kind of stuff. Like they'll talk about the meal thing, but and I'm not saying they don't have any good content, but it's wrapped up in a whole bunch of other trash. And, no, I'm talking about like how to cook the meal, like go, walk well, through the whole thing, the process, well, all that. But a lot of the women right now, it's like if you notice, the women are going through all of these things, all, all of these hoops to get counseling and therapy and reading books and everything else. And you don't hear men doing those things. They may talk about pushing out a couple of push ups and everything, but you don't hear men talking about how they're going to get mentally healthy, but the women are. See, and that's why I said, wait a second, these conversations are out of balance anyway. But they need to be doing what these that's, women want to catch that's, men. that's typically a topic that men aren't going to talk about. Yeah, the most men, the, yeah, yeah, see, yeah, you're yeah, dealing with yeah. you're talking about emotions and most yeah, we, to be fair. Most, we, we don't, we, most men don't really talk emotion. Right. No, now no, we no. may do a sports analysis. Let's for now it's things to death. Well, I'm not letting you reduce this to emotions. I'm just talking, talking. Right. Talk. That's what I'm saying. No, Most no, no, men no. do not talk <laughs> unless it's about some sports. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You can't sit there and tell me that the black women have to bear the brunt of trying to get their life together, go to counseling, read books, work out. Do uh, I'm not saying that they, they have to. I'm just saying what men generally I'll don't do. I'll let, you I'll let you chime in in a second. You can't tell me that these black women have to do all of these things, and I don't see it in balance with these black men. You don't want this so, damaged. I think I told you I was I did this panel years ago with um it was like a group of single women and myself and three other guys. But one of the points the guys made up is nobody really cares how we feel anyway. It's like, hey, suck it up. You gotta go out there and provide. You gotta go do this, you gotta go do that. Why what you crying about? What you crying about? You know, so we don't talk no, about that stuff because no, nobody uh, who cares. That's, that's, and then that's the truth because the prime example and uh one comedian made a point of this like when a person will see like um a a, a homeless man and they'll have a dog with them more people care about the damn dog than they did the man <laughs> <laughs> i saw that routine i don't know who did it though but, like, i mean that's that's generally it's like you know when they got the things about missing women that could be something about about a missing man nobody give a damn oh well Screw that man. He's whatever. He'll figure he'll it right. out. Yeah, he's a man. He'll be all right. So I mean, I, that's, think, I think that's why we don't really talk about that stuff because most of the time, it's like, we don't want to hear you complain. But maybe we should. And the point I'm making is, I think it's important at middle age to have these kinds of discussions, even when they're uncomfortable. But they shouldn't. The the the, the panel discussion shouldn't always be on. You know. Should we listen to so and so denigrate women? No, obviously, you shouldn't, right? Like, I'm just tired of hearing the same conversations, the same cast of characters out there uh, on both sides mm -hmm. talking crazy. And what happens is you can't even hear the real message because it's wrapped in vitriol, mm -hmm. it's wrapped in anger. And uh, you know, now coming from a woman's point of view, what I will say is, why are you women out here constantly listening to men, multiple men? Who aren't even? Oh. 
Well, yeah. They're trying to tell you how to catch a man. They're trying to tell you how to get married, and yet they're not married. Why is it that you have all this work? I don't know. The work. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a that's a multi layered thing to me, but um. I think it was something. Uh, you see, you got me calling this man sugar booty, but I'm gonna go. <laughs> but, it, but it was something that he said that I had to think about it, and the reason I think, and I think it's the reason or that the answer to your question is that one one of his things he said: women control access to sex, men control access to relationships. And it's true. And I was like, so that's why. So that would explain why you have you know a, a segment of women out there going to men saying, well, how do I you know. I don't know if it's a how do I do this question, but pretty much talking to them about listen to it though. Listen to what I'm saying. They're going to men. And they may be going to the wrong men, but <laughs> but it's like you want to know how do women who get married do it? Go ask a married woman. A man is not gonna tell you how to be a woman. They're gonna tell you what they want, but they don't know how to tell you how to be a woman. Because a lot of stuff that some of these guys say, I'm like. Oh, but freak. but here's here's the thing about it. Why aren't a lot of these women talking to married women? That's a good question. Well, it is a good question. But what I'm saying is, instead of having a conversation all the time about like I need a man, I want a woman, the women are all fat and all of those stupid stuff that they're talking about. I'm like, you sound stupid as hell. You don't sound like an intellectual. You don't sound like you can engage in extemporaneous speaking. You don't sound as if you can speak about something that requires a level of critical thinking. What you're doing mm -hmm. is talking about the surface level stuff. The things- Talk, that You're talking about the superficial. Yes. And I'm just kind of like, why are these chicks out here going to he who shall not be named and some other, because I don't even put on <laughs> names. They are going out there. I'm like, why would you sign up for that pain? And I'm like, what you need to do is go find some of these married women. Because while these men are sitting there running you down, telling you everything you need to do and everything that is wrong with you, these are the ones that are going to tell you how to find one. Yeah. They're the ones that can tell you how to catch a man. Mm -hmm. A man mm -hmm. can tell you how to catch a man. He can tell you all the things that he thinks you should do and what he thinks he wants. And have to I'm trying not to cuss. The stuff that they're saying, I'm like, really, dude? Because hey, in my see. final younger days, when, and, and look, take this harsh light off and everything else. I'm like, take this crap out of my hair. I was killing them. I'm like, all that stuff they were talking about, I'm like, shut up. You'll be the first one like a puppy dog. Just have a conversation. Shut up. You know, I'm like, you sound dumb as hell. And the same ones that are doing all that talking are all of them out there single, angry, been married 500 times. Oh, hey, Steve. I already made a mint off of it. Yes, he yes. did. <laughs> he made a mint off of that book, <laughs> the two movies, and I think a follow on book. Yes. And look, and I'm like, dude, what makes you an expert? And he, and look, and look who and he man. tell you. He tell you right off the top, I'm an expert. I'm like, really? Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, dudes, and I'm like, you are going to marry women? The married women are the ones who are sitting there laughing at this. Like, there's a reason why well, they're like, you are the ones who've been married for a long time. Not, we don't want Josh Gabor or some of the other women who've been married <laughs> several, <laughs> with eight trying to get advice. Yeah, that's that's another. <laughs> but they're out there. Yeah. We're not having substantive conversations where we can get multiple perspectives. We don't have enough people getting on here talking about cryptocurrency. We don't have enough people talking about basic things. Why, if you're going to have a 401k on your job, why you probably should be using the Roth just as much as the traditional portion within the 401k and when and how much of the percentage well, you should use. Remember, you tried to explain that to your buddy and he didn't get it. He didn't, Who have, was he didn't understand it. Um, the, the person that uh, Miss Bo affectionately refers to as Ding Dong, Uncle Rum, Uncle Uncle Remus, Uncle Remus. No, 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 no. not Uncle Remus. No. but uh, the one she calls Dick that she that she had the, the issue with. At one point in time, we had that conversation, and he didn't get it. He didn't understand what she was saying. Right. He probably needed to hear it multiple times, right? They said you got to hear something seven times, and usually the first time you know. Uh, see, this is the thing. So, see, this is what I think. Where you, where you see, this goes back to you being uh, disappointed in black folks, and sometimes you just got to give up on people. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes 
So she just, you know, just some folks ain't gonna question. make it. I just told you, some folks ain't that's, gonna that's make it. In my first book, in my first book, um, you know, I basically said there's just some. Some folks ain't that. just gonna make it. That's how I tell. You, you know what's funny, I, and I'm not. I can't. For, you I know, it's and and, and it was sometimes going back to the point. You know, to trying to say, uh, save everybody. There's an old saying, you know, when you try to help somebody who's drowning, what happens sometimes the person's trying to help them drown ends up to be the one that gets drowned. Drown. Well, you got to put them in a headlock on the back and everything else. Now, I'm a horrible swimmer. I, I can save myself. No, nah, I just let them drown. <laughs> That's just, it wasn't God's will. Gotta talk about a little bit. You got to get in the headlock or whatever. It was. Look, it wasn't God's will. It was God. God wasn't with him. God, it was just God's will. Well, I can't say God wasn't with him. It was God's will that was his time. He got called home. No. No. Well, I guess what I'm saying is, see, you guys are getting me all topic. My point was, we don't have enough mature conversations. And then, mm -hmm. if I break it down further, which is where you're going to be like tuning out, but like women don't talk enough about like what happens at middle age. Why are women not sleeping? Black women do have anxiety. It's a real thing. It is. <laughs> but the one part, uh, but the one part that I, uh, I'm kind of laughing about, which I, I don't know if I agree with, seeing that why women aren't talking. <laughs> so you're just trying to be mean and shady. So you're lucky that I am a nice person. <laughs> Maybe you guys should talk more. You would be so angry. <laughs> hey, that's just that's the red pill community. That's all. <laughs> Your favorite I, community. I think it's <laughs> manosphere. It's not just red pill. It's manosphere too. Now it's not that the manosphere doesn't have good stuff. Now I don't even know even like talking about this stuff because I'm afraid that the algorithm's gonna pick up on these words. And yes, you said it already. It's too late. But this is the thing about about the 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 manosphere, and it's not that there aren't good parts in it, but I find that the people who are in these these spheres. Um, are being intellectually dishonest about how they're presenting information because what they really want to do is they still want to cut. They still want to hurt. They still want to tear down. I think they're being intellectually dishonest because they say that we got to build the black community and yet and still they're not interested in building that community. Not I don't know. I, I, well, 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 you know what? I, I think you need to separate some of those. I don't think everyone in the so-called manosphere is in there trying to build the black community. I think again, like I said, I think a lot of those guys who are who are in that community are nothing but uh, late bloomers and uh, N word nerds. <laughs> you say ninja. <laughs> okay, ninja nerds. Ninja nerds. <laughs> I but I feel like it's so intellectually dishonest because they're not interested. In building anything, they're interested in division. They're profiting off of it. So no, I think some of them are just 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 hurt dudes. They're hurt dudes trying to, you know, who trying to uh, live out their uh, version of the vapors. You know, like the old Miss <laughs> Marquis song. That's funny. I just, you don't remember the song? I, the song Vapors. <laughs> I don't know that song. Oh, I probably know the song when I hear the words. I don't know the title. If you heard it, you know it. Ah, okay. You, if you heard it, you know. Rest it. in peace, Bismarck King. It's been a few months. So, like, I'm sitting here, like, well, if you, you know, you got all these guys out here just having hurt feelings, need some poon, and I'm just going, like, I'm tired. I'm tired of hearing you talk about how it's like. I'm so sick and tired of all these baby mamas, and you know how I feel about that term, but yet that's exactly what they want to create. Then they talk uh, about that from black women. I'm like, so you're just making the other baby mamas. Well, to be fair to that, I don't think some of those dudes are trying to make baby mamas. No, I, I, I don't yeah. think that. Uh, however, and I know you don't like that term, I think when you say the baby mama, you have to get in, in conjunction the dusty dude, I think they go hand in hand. And so <clears throat> you don't have the baby's mamas without the dusty dudes. And you got to remember, it only takes a few dusty dudes to make a lot of baby mamas. So. so that's why I say I like having the panel and we talk about these different topics, right? Talking mm -hmm. about, you know, like I said, women's stuff, which is where you're not going to want to go, but I can't get enough women panelists right now. Why we're not sleeping. 
why your cycles change, you know, why there are the hormones, what is what is going on? Like why why are you so stressed out? Where's the anxiety coming from? I mean, that's part of the is that, is that part of the change? I don't know. I'm not a woman, so you know. But the fact of the matter is, middle aged women. I just, believe it. So what you guys don't know was right before we got on this live, I did a live. I made it private and then I made it public. I did a live on what middle aged women don't care about. Mm -hmm. We don't care about pop culture. Up until a few months ago, I wasn't even on this platform. We don't have time. You guys know I talk about this. We don't have the time. We don't. What are I even really going to Wait, wait, wait. Are you saying all middle-aged women or middle-aged women with children? I think that you have to make a well, distinction. Well, I don't did you? make some of a distinction, but the fact of the matter is much of the content is silly. We don't care that much about pop culture. And, and then, so I did a... I, I, I don't know about that. Uh, oh, so is that younger women? I guess that is younger women who watch The View and all that other madness. And, That's the demographic for well, uh, and uh, what's the what's the one with Whoopi and all that? That's is that the View and the, I think that's the, the view. real and the and all and who who are, and the housewives and the who, who watch what women what women are watching that? What demographics are watching? I just watched some of the housewives. No, <laughs> okay. I can't. I can't watch them. I'm like, this is too much for me. It is it, a lot. So it I've is a, it's the same. It's the same formula. I'm watching, but I'm it's, the, to... it's the same formula, though, isn't it? It is. Yeah. I, I've I've, watched, I've tried to, I've watched a couple and I'm just like this don't even make sense like, y'all are grown ass women on TV acting like this. The uh, ones well, are, well to be to be fair all the all these um, kind of shows like that are nothing but replacements of the previous generation soap operas. It's just a cheaper version without having a higher uh, actresses. So, but where I was going, I so. where I was going with this is. The content that's out there, like I don't watch all the housewives. Like, I, first of all, I don't have the cycles, and it's gotten so dumb that I've been so turned off. So now I'm just falling further and further behind. I would say this the content that's out there does not address middle aged women and men, particularly middle aged women, more particularly middle aged black women. The things that we think about getting kids through college retirement, retiring comfortably, right? Wealth transfer, home ownership, those things. What does it mean to really vote? What is it like having to help parents but raise children at the same time, being part of the Sanders generation? Those are real conversations. What is it like, you know, when Black men they they have this crazy fear about getting a prostate checking carrying on like some of the silly stuff you guys talk about. I'm like, go get your stuff checked out, but they don't want to get checked out. It's a real conversation. I don't, know if, I, don't, I don't know if that's silly, but I mean, you know, we a, have to go into as a, as a man, you just want to make sure you got a doctor, <laughs> uh, particularly a female <laughs> doctor with small hands. That's all. <laughs> 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 That's a good I'm joke. I, I can't believe it, you know, but, but I mean, like, we should be talking about all kinds of topics, but instead, the content that's out there is the same cast of characters, and they're making a mint on these same ridiculous topics, exploiting each other. It's the modern form of minstrel with a black face. A natural black face. And what we do is, and you know how I feel about this, it's all it's all captured under the guises of it's funny and entertainment. That's what we're calling it. And they were co-signing the bad behavior. They're intellectually dishonest. Even the type of people that they bring on their panels are the same type of people. They are curating the same type of person, knowing that we're not a monolith. You got these women out here going on these shows. Some of them acting like pure pick me. It's like, oh, I'm trying to get a man. So they will go out there and denigrate a woman for the sake of elevating themselves. And that is the definition of a pick me. You got women out there who won't go to marry women. They're going to men who aren't even married, who can't stay married, been divorced 500 times, can't find a woman. But they're going to them because they're the expert. 
And so they can find the woman, they just can't keep them. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have no problem finding them. Finding, <laughs> finding is, is the easy part, it's to keep them. <laughs> it's the same thing for women. They can find a man, but they can't keep them. But they're going to these ding a lings, and these guys are acting like they're, they're, they're like the be all end all. These are the people that we have elevated in the community. And what they've done, they, they, it's just like, what, what do they call, um, or some, I'm not comparing them to a false prophet, but it reminds me of like when they talk about false prophets. A really good false prophet will weave in portions of the truth. So it becomes so difficult to but, distinguish. Yeah, that's true. I, I mean, you know what I think about, now that you bring that up, I think of how different is Kevin, well, he who will not be named. Yeah, I mean, from, well, <laughs> from, 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 uh, Wait, how how different is he from since we're talking about bringing women into how different is he from like TD Jakes? Some of these. He's just he just isn't cut in the cloth. <laughs> he who shall not be like a demigod. They're walking around calling this cat the Godfather. And let me tell you how embarrassing it is when I see my black men on some of these things. I don't see it all, all the time now. I had to get that idea. I was like, I had to divest from some of this stuff. I mean, I had to purge some of it. This is the thing. You've got men on some of these platforms. Like when they come into these platforms, they get so hard and so excited that they're practically nothing on themselves, hoping that he who shall not be named calls in to defend a position that they can't defend themselves because they don't have the capability to engage in critical thinking or extemporaneous speaking. So what they do is they're like praying to the demigod, like there's some freaking minion in the oh left. Oh my goodness. Embarrassing. They're like, please, where is so and so so he can come in? And, and I was watching. I was at my daughter's practice, and I actually turned on um, the lead attorney. I haven't paid attention to him in a while. I heard some of the. I was in and out of that conversation, but there were people in the chat who were like, "Where is Sugar Booty? Where is he who shall not be named?" And I was like, "Yo." They are literally practically chanting like they had stakes and 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 time. Yeah. I was like, "What about this that people don't even see?" And I gotta do. I gotta do my own anecdotal research because I'm like, I'm curious to know how many people are actually. I'm like, I'm like, you can just go ahead and just just wait because they, they pop up all the chats and people are like, "We need sugar. Like, we want he who shall not be named." This is yeah. not, it's at cult status without the religion. Yes, yeah, I, 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 I really need to look and see. He came on, like he, he was one of, he, he, they, they let him call in. He was pissed because I don't like to give him any airtime, but I was going to do something. I'm like, oh, damn, my ears. He came in, and it's not that some of the stuff he says is wrong, because some of it is true. But you don't have to exploit your people and talk to them like trash. Now, I didn't hear his whole thing yesterday of what he said on that uh, platform. And I, I don't think he went in on that platform because he can't go in on that platform. I don't think so. I don't know. I didn't hear the whole thing. I heard a very small snippet of it. So he didn't say anything crazy or out of pocket. But what I am saying is he has a responsibility when you know that you have the minds of people who are easily influenced because it's easy to give someone a platform and an opinion when they are damaged, when they are hurting, when they don't have family, especially the youth. And when you don't have anything, we don't have a strong moral foundation and you don't have enough experience where your ethics challenges things, it's easy to give you your opinion and it's easy to give you your stance. You're easily influenced. And he has the minds of some of these dingalings and older dingalings. And now they listen with rabid ears, as if he's dropping manna from the heavens. It is embarrassing that our black men have fallen hook, line, and sinker for somebody doing that. He is no different than a Maury Povich. I said what I said. It is what it is. He is no different than a Maury Povich. He's exploiting our people. Just <sighs> I don't know, yeah. I don't know. Y'all all like subscribe to him. They're like, we move sugar booty. I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't, yeah. I don't. You, know, you know how you guys co sign it? You guys say things like, 
I don't listen to the whole thing. I only listen to part of it because it's too <laughs> long. I, well, What's that? Say, I'm what are not... we talking about? You tell me, your you tell boy, me your about. favorite. My favorite? Yeah. So, <laughs> Professor Black Truth? Yeah. Professor Black Truth? Okay, yeah. Anyway, that's how I feel about it. So it's not that homie says a ton of bad things, but it is exploited in nature. You when you have a bunch of damaged people coming to a show. I haven't watched this show in a year and a half or whatever it was. When you have a bunch of people that you know are damaged, you know they're curating a certain type of person, male or female. When they're calling in and people take pleasure in the tearing down of a whole black person who's clearly a damaged person. They shouldn't be calling in there, signing up for some of that pain. And he's sitting there licking his chops. And everyone's like, oh, these women are just mad. The message is still good. They just don't like how I'm saying it. I'm like, <laughs> <"That's> so, <laughs> you really don't like this. You really don't like I this guy, I, huh? No, I don't. I, I, I guess I, I have a hard time when I have a hard time giving people the, the pass to say they're being exploited when you're voluntarily it's participating. Not- you and, and you and you know ahead of time what the format is. You know ahead of time. So let, what what responsibility do you have? Me? Huh? What responsibility do you have? What if I told you I was eighteen? Mm-hmm. I'm eighteen. Okay. Mm-hmm. Eighteen year old calling to the CBR Kid motorcycle show. By the way, he mm-hmm. has a YouTube channel. You guys should check it out. CBR Kid One K R R. He has a motorcycle channel. Since he doesn't like to promote his channel, I'm going to promote. Well, check this out. Let's say I'm eighteen years old, mm-hmm. and I've had some sexual trauma in my life, mm-hmm. and I got daddy issues. Mm-hmm. And you know it, mm-hmm. but it's legal to deal with me, right? She keeps coming over. Well, personally, I wouldn't deal with an eighteen-year-old. No, but... Scenario, but you well, know, deal, um, deal with them in what man, what manner? Whatever. Like giving advice. If, if what if I'm calling? What, what if it's sexual stuff? Oh well, yeah. But, the, the, but now we talking about something different. That's, <laughs> no, but it is what it is. Whether it's sexual or whatever, whatever. If you've got people who are damaged. Calling in these are homeless people, and and why is it so amazing that it tends to be the same type of person, and no one thinks that hey, some of these guests are probably curated. Maybe so. Now probably, you got probably some, so. Now you got some dingalings who think that this is the vast majority of the blackly black black women. I just I just feel like when you well, how, well he's yeah, been out there okay. long enough now that you know what he does. Everybody, anybody right. it should be kind of this it man. Be kinda, you know making, what assumption that people can engage in critical thinking, just like the dingalings who've all signed up and subscribed to him. You think that most of these people are engaging in critical thinking? They are calling him the godfather and they're treating him like a demigod. Everybody knows. Well, no, they don't. And you take for granted your ability to be in your right mind. See, I I don't know. I I, I, I hear what you're saying, but I I also think that's a Probably more more people than not that can that can't engage in critical thinking, I, so just in society in general. It but, makes it worse that he's doing that, exploiting his own people. These people are damn. See, I know I, I hear I hear exactly what you're saying. I just have a hard time calling it exploitation when if I know that you're going to say this, you're going to say this, you think that. You know, this is what you do, blah, blah. And then I call in the extra advice anyway. I already know the answer you're going to give me. But maybe so, they don't um, think that they're, maybe they don't think that they're going to get bombed out. I don't know. I, I mean, I just, I have, a, I don't know. For me, I have a hard time calling the exploitation when you, you voluntarily participate. Why? In Even something that they you, are a volunteer, damaged people coming in and you want to talk, like, that, that's, that's how we want to talk to people now. You got to tear down people. No, you don't have to. But if you sign up for it and you know what this man does ahead of time, that's on you. I don't call. I don't put that on him. I put that on you as a person. Like, you know, like I got, you know, I know D Shabazz's stance is on, on black culture. He goes hard with certain things. And if I'm going to call him and try to debate him on the opposite, I can't get mad if he goes hard on me because I chose to participate in that discussion. 
I don't so know. I, I, think I think that's different, but so this is I mean, it's a parallel. It's, it's not the same thing, but it's a right. parallel. Well, so this is all, I know we went off topic, but um, I think what we need to do is have another one of these conversations. I, I think it's going to be on interracial dating. And these guys, you're just going to be mad. <laughs> that's what it is. And he's well, like, uh, it's not a, I'm not going to be mad. I just can't contribute because I never said, inter, I, I don't, I've never dated. And, uh, interracially, you so. have strong <laughs> opinions on why people should not be dating outside of the race. Well, I mean, not saving. I would say, yeah. okay, well, <laughs> hold the hold, hold the content. <laughs> we went back and forth. We were on chat at work. It was like a good hour. <laughs> really? It was like a good hour. go back. It was like about a good hour. That's funny. It was great. Uh, so, all right. So, I can't well, remember my point. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, I don't have any experience either. I had access. I just did not. So, um, all right. So, look. Let's go ahead. We're gonna get off. Does anybody want to say anything? You want to promote your channel or anything? You know, I'm getting on Disha Bass for taking too long to get his channel up and running. But See, you want to say no, something? It's, nope. It's the screen name CBRK One K R R. <laughs> T-shirts coming soon, so I had next time. Hopefully, next time I have. And a merch. Yeah, well, yeah, you got to rock the merch in the next uh, segment. Right, I had I had a merch. He's a little ahead of me on that one. I was like, get your merch out. I just finally got my logo stuff done like, for the for the. But that's good. I like it. You gotta wear yeah, it. So I, I gotta get some. Shirt. I got some. I got some test shirts coming in to see how they see how they come out. I want. I want one. I got you. I gotta get uh, you the Girl Scout cookies. Though. Actually, I will. Yeah. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna give you the money, but you can leave put those out for the for the vultures at work. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to be eating them. <laughs> Neither do I. But all right, so look, uh, what about you, D Shabazz? Um, no, just tell everybody, uh, but uh smash the like button on this set on this video, uh, subscribe, uh, and share this content. Oh, you're the best. All right, until next time, guys. See ya. All right.